Good evening and welcome back to Canon Chatter TV as well as Albert J TV this evening. Um, I am your host tonight, Lottie, and I am on the screen with my two favourite people in the whole YouTube, whole YouTube community. Um, I've got my bestie sitting next to me, which is G. How are you doing, G? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm so excited for tomorrow. I've had my bag packed for days for the Euros. I'm so excited to be going up to Old Trafford. Oh, a bit of Sorry. technical difficulty there. Me. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to say hello, hello to my other, my other, my other favourite on the YouTube community, and that's my other bestie, Albs. How you doing? Good, man. We've arrived, man. Preview the 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 the, the day before the not the night after, shall I say? Shall I say? But no, this has been in the pipeline for a while, man. So um, we knew he was going to cover it. Um, uh, it's yeah. been coming, and uh, the, the excitement's built, the excitement's built up absolutely for the tournament, man. So um. Yeah, looking forward to it. Buzzing for yourself for going to the game tomorrow, the opening game. Um, so, yeah. yeah, there's lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. Yeah, no, absolutely buzzing. Now that I've introduced everybody, I'm going to quickly run to a brand new Euro intro. Please be kind, people. I did make this myself and it is my first one. So, see you on the other side. It's not just a game. He knows exactly where the goal is, that never changes. Just... It's not just a women's team. This is the Lionesses. This is family. All of us. All together. Our England. Canon Chatter presents The Lioness Takeover Euro 2022. All right, welcome back to Canon Chatter TV and Albert J TV because we are streaming from both channels tonight, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so, guys, well, how excited are we for tomorrow night? Whether we're going G. or watching it from G. home, Maybe yeah, it's first <laughs> beyond. Um, it seems like every conversation I'm having with people I know um, at the minute, they're asking me when the game is, when does it start, what time, um, what channel, everything. So um, I don't know if that's a mixture of me putting it in their heads or they have been noticing the promotions of it. Um, but either way, just to get more people interested and in, and watch it when it's on a decent channel as well at a good time um it's amazing so i just can't wait for it to start and almost like the the england fever is almost here yeah no i've, I've got to be honest with you um the, the women's euros and spotify dropped their playlist and i've had it on solidly for the last 48 hours i think this is the first time today i'm not actually listening to it because i'm joined by you wonderful people alps how are you feeling yeah, I'm, I'm good, man. Um, one thing I must say, very important, people. We are streaming from both channels, from Albert J TV and Canon Chatter. But also remember, smash a like on each channel because if you smash a like on mine, it won't it won't automatically be a like on Canon Chatter. So and vice versa. So it's important, people, that you do that. So multitask, smash the like, obliterate the like button. Should I say sorry? But um, yeah, looking forward to it, man. As I said to you two before, in terms of the women's football. Um, the national side I've followed for a long, long, long time, man. Long, long time. So, any tournament football, and and I think especially because it's a home tournament as well, is is huge. I think the players probably are probably feeling it a little bit. They're very cool, calm, and collective with certain individuals. But you know that there, there's a massive, massive pressure there. And um, I know that I know a lot of it. Probably the England ladies spoke to like the men's team in terms of how they prepped in terms of the tournament and. The whole media day thing that you probably saw on Sky Sports which was fantastic, by the way, um, which Caroline Barker did. Um, yeah, great to know the players inside out, really. And, um, you know, put them out to a wider audience and maybe some of the people that are new to women's football um, are not familiar with the... I think, I believe there's nine debutants in the England squad for this tournament, I believe. So huh. it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting, Van Tots and, and, and G. Exciting times. Yeah, and one of those one of those is uh, one of G's new favourites. But we will get on to her much, much later. And um, I am going to jump over to the comments and see who's in there before my first guest comes in, because I can see him waiting in the background. 
Uh, so we've got Holly in and Holly. Congrats on the 1K, Albert. Woo! <laughs> uh, got Rudy in the chat. Evening, ladies and gents. Go on. This, this is a jazzy intro. Thank you, Holly. Must say, this song is a good and on the old canvas. Yes, 100%, Holly. Completely agree. Thank you, Rudy, for a smashing intro. And Holly's already off seeing three lines on the shirt. She's two days behind me, so we're all good to go. Right, and my, my first guest is in the back, so I'm going to bring him on. He works with, he does a lot of stuff on Arsenal Fans Forever with G. Um, everybody, welcome Jonesy to the chat. How are you, Jonesy? Good. How you doing? How you doing, guys? Yeah, good, all, good. all good. Jonesy, not bad, mate. Good to see you. How are you good feeling for the tournament, mate? Yeah, I'm excited, you know. Um, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? So uh, just wanted to kick off, you know, just just anticipating the return of football. Um, and what a better way to have it back than with this tournament tomorrow. No, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing. I mean, the, sweep, the sweepstakes been done by G, but I'll let G yes. talk about that a bit more in, in a bit. But um, Albert, what... Oh my gosh, my mind's gone blank. I'm really sorry. Jake, do you want to talk oh, about this, the sweet sticks? My mind's go on, completely go on, gone go blank. Go I've yeah. lost it. Um, so, yeah, the, luckily, um, I was searching online and they've actually made a Euros one. So we didn't have to put too much effort into it. Um, oh, yeah. All we had to do was put our names in and it generated it all last, uh, by itself. Um, so um, I'll mention ours first. So we'll go with Albert first. I don't know if you saw earlier, oh, but you well. have actually drawn probably the best one. <laughs> you got Spain and the Netherlands. How did you feel yeah. when that popped up? I, I, <laughs> I was at work. So obviously you guys sent me the message through in terms of uh, who I got. I said, this is unbelievable. In a good way, obviously. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Listen, any sweepstake you do, right, even if it's Eurovision, you want to get the Britain or, or, or the UK, <laughs> But yeah. to get Spain on, I thought, you know what? I cannot complain with those two, man. Um, so I, I am very, very, not not smug, but I, I'm happy with the choices I've got. Nice. Yeah. And unfortunately, Jonesy probably had one of the worst ones. Um, yeah. You had Norway and Austria. Um, obviously, oh, we both know that they're, well, both of them are in our group anyway. Um, <laughs> so maybe you might be all right with one. But how did you feel when you saw those earlier? Um, I think I was the reverse of Albert. He was excited. I think I had to sit down and take a few deep breaths. Um, but no, you got you know Norway are a decent team. They you know they can cause an upset on their day, and they're pretty much dark horses in this tournament. So um, I'm I'm quietly confident with Norway to be honest to make the latter stages. No. Hopefully, not at the expense of England. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, Lottie, you drew out Northern Ireland um, and Italy. Yeah, well, Northern yeah. Ireland, I'm I'm not holding up up much hope from what I've seen in the World Cup qualifiers. Italy, though, they've got some class players. Um, yeah, I'll come on to my sure. my person of interest in a little bit, but she's pretty incredible. So it was a complete random out of the team, and it was, it was a really good pick. But mm. I think Italy have a decent chance, but how far they go, I have no idea. Mm. One of the dark horses, maybe. Yeah, I did try to tempt Albert to swap with me, but no chance. <laughs> no, that, that, that was, no, that was not happening. Not, <laughs> <laughs> not a chance, eh? But, but Josie, I wanted to, to ask you, mate, in terms of um, sort of, I don't know how long you've been following the women's football, whether it be domestically or internationally. Can you remember, what's your, like, your sort of first memories of women's football domestically and internationally for England? Um, to be fair, it's mainly domestically with Arsenal. Um, I always used to follow Alex Scott and, you know, all the rest of them. I always used to watch the FA Cup with my dad when we was always in it. Um, and it isn't really till this season, really, that I really got into it. I went to a couple of games with Lottie, uh, Champions League, the North London derby. And it's just really heightened my interest a lot more. Um, it's a lot more depressing than the men's game, to be honest. Um, <laughs> But that's saying something else. But yeah, I, I just think the quality and football that they're they're bringing these ladies at the moment is phenomenal. You know, yeah, they're fully deserving of being paid as much as the men, um, and they should have the the screen time and the TV time and the media time as much as the the professional men and the professional women. So this tournament is is going to be a great. It's going to be the biggest one. That's what they've said, and I'm fully looking forward to it. But 
yeah, I can't wait to be honest. I just want tomorrow night to happen now. <laughs> yeah, sometimes Jones, you know what it is. I think sometimes um, the women's game has grown massively. Um, people obviously argue sometimes how quickly that process has been. Um, mm. we're, get, we're getting we're getting there slowly. You know, um, I mean, like I said to the guys before we went live, um, you know, with the men's team, they had like the media day and. As I'm I'm old enough to remember the days where that that them, them things never used to happen. So no. I think for the for the for the national team to get them kind of things and it, it's just it's more exposure for them and it you know it's it's new to them to be honest with you. Yes, they're professional footballers, but they would never have had this exposure in terms of the national team for, for as long as I can remember. So mate, onwards and upwards, man. The growth has been is has been fantastic. Um, you know, with Definitely. a lot of things, it comes down to money, doesn't it? So um, we'll, we'll see in years to come. But yeah, it's very exciting for this tournament. I'll bring in my fantastic co-host, Lottie. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm sitting here thinking that I, we're all England fans on this channel. Uh, we'll, we'll, we might as well be straight up and honest, but we do have other teams to look at. Yes. Um, Jonesy, how far do you think the girls are going to go under Serena? That is the biggest question of the night for me, for my guests. I'm I think it's, it's all about expectation, I think, with this group of players. Um, they're expected to win it. Let's be honest, it's on our home turf. Um, and looking at it, if we can get the route that we want, I can see us, you know, possibly getting Spain if we make it to the finals, if they follow their route as well. But I, I can definitely see us winning this. There's um, big chance. I don't know, there's just something special in the air, I think, this year. Yeah, um, no, definitely. I can I was, totally agree with that. I am I am going to slightly disagree with the Spain one though because we've just found out well, that yeah. Alexia Putalas, the Ballon d'Or winner, has gone out with an ACL injury and they wow. have no Hermoso either, which oh, is wow. gut wrenching for Spain. But mm. one to watch is definitely Athena del Castillo, which is going to be very she's going to be very good to watch. Albert sitting there with his smile on his face. I'm sure we'll hear yeah. some more about her in a bit. Yeah. Because you For mentioned, sure. like, because you, you mentioned a good point, Lottie, actually, in terms mm. of, um, yes, we want England to do well, but, you know, there's a lot of talent in this tournament. And me and Lottie are going to one of the non England games. We're going to Spain, yeah. Germany. Um, yeah. So looking forward to that. No, definitely. That's next Tuesday at Brentford yeah. Stadium. I can tick Brentford Stadium off my stadium list now. I'm now yeah. 165 UK and European grounds. Well, nice. men's well, though, but well. I am going to start making my little list for my women's grounds th this season. I will be going up and down the country with the girls, hopefully, with some luck. And I will be taking my wonderful co host that is sitting right next to me, and I'm going to hand over to her. Fingers crossed, eh? Hey? Yeah, I'm um, just going back to the sweepstakes a second here. Um, so mine were Denmark and Belgium. Um, we've obviously played Belgium quite recently as well. Um, you know, we, we I think we comfortably beat them in the end, but they when it comes into tournaments, obviously it's a bit different to playing your friendlies leading up to it. So they'll be an interesting one to see how they sort of cope. Um and Denmark, um I've kind of heard bits and bobs that they could be really, really up there. Um they've got a really good squad. Obviously we know a couple, um, but most of them are sort of spread out across different leagues as well. So Another another team, I feel like there's a lot of teams that are going to get quite close. <laughs> you know, it's not like with other ones where you, you could guarantee a couple of teams might get there or the usual names of the teams. But this time round, um, with the women, I think that there's so much talent across um, Europe at the minute in our league, um, obviously with the Champions League. So it's a really exciting time to broaden our horizons to, to other players as well. Um, do you want me to mention some of the other sweepstakes? Should I just quickly go through the um, others? I actually really want to quickly ask Jonesy on his thoughts on the Netherlands game. Because out of all yeah. the international friendlies, that is my favourite game. Yeah. Mm. I, I do feel like it meant a bit more, especially with Serena at the wheel and with the Netherlands new manager, who is an English coach. So yeah. it, was, it must have been a bit strange playing against your own country. But how mm. do you think mm. that the Lionesses did and especially with Viv on the bench. Like, we mm. know how lethal she is, but she didn't start. So, mm. it, which says a lot. And they do play her up front and not where Jonas Eidevel plays her. So, she hasn't got that freedom like we see at Arsenal. I do apologise, guys. I've got my Arsenal hat on again. But <laughs> that's where my knowledge base comes from on, on Viv. But yeah. how do you think we did overall, Jonesy? And how do you think Serena felt playing them? Because that was her old team. Yeah, it was a strange one, wasn't it? His um, 
it was like a role reversal, basically, weren't it? It was. Uh, I think we did okay. You know, we we, we played very well. You know, and th that's what I mean. The, the confidence that we can take from that game, mm -hmm. if that we can put that straight into against Austria tomorrow night, then you know, like I say, I, I don't want to jinx. That's the thing. We watch England. We watch the men's game. We watch other games. I just yeah. I don't know. I don't want to say anything, but I'm on it. But I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I feel like I've got to. But it's I'm confident. I'm very confident, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably why we're going to be avoiding score predictions for most of the yeah. England games. Mm. I will be because I know I'm a jinx, I'm afraid. I'm going to take my stat man Matt's um, stance on this, which I'm totally with. Um, actually, G, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this one at you. How do you think Serena's thinking about this tournament? I mean, she's won, won the, the European Championships before. Can she do it again? Yeah, I think... Um... Me and you watched the Lionesses show that they put out yesterday. Um, it was half an hour long and it it sort of picked up from when she first joined. Um, and straight away, she was like, the whole reason I came here was for the challenge. Um, you know, she's she's done what she's done with her own country, which is probably for a coach, the pinnacle you can get to winning the major tournament with your own country. Um, so I don't think she'll be thinking too much about them at all. Um, you know, she's already been there, done it. So I think... The kind of character she's looked to be in all the press conferences and everything she just wants to she's f fully focused on us she openly said how much talent we have and how much she could see the togetherness and with the fans as well and what it was growing over here and she wanted to be a part of it so i think she's had her moment with her country obviously she'll be in the back of her mind it's still her country isn't it so you'll always support them in a way but I think her full focus is with us and she'll really be wanting to take that over and, and achieve something greater for herself as well and do it twice. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that's absolutely spot on. Um, I'll, I'll, before I hand over to Albert, I'm going to quickly flip over to the comments. Holly is telling us we've been blessed with her singing for three lines, <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Mr. Silver Fox, also known as Uncle Tony in the chat. Good evening, you glorious Hello, bunch. Tony. Come on, you lionesses. We've got Richard in the chat. They're really looking forward to the tournament. Seems like seems to have taken yes. an age to get here, and it's great to see you all give it, giving this top, some top coverage. Uh, brilliant. Thank you, Rich. Holly's back. Tempting to go to the Northern Ireland game on Thursday at St. Mary's. There's still loads of tickets. Do it. Well, no, if anyone's no. around in Southampton, absolutely go and buy your tickets. And Holly, you better be going because... I heard you had tickets the last time. So don't miss it. Seriously. Holly, Holly just go to the spoons and, and put the word go put the, put the word out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure people will go, but don't worry. Rally the people. <laughs> yeah. We've got Captain okay. Martin Walker. Hey, yo, yo. Um, Holly, Alex Scott is still my face, even though the arsenal bit. <laughs> For anybody in the chat that doesn't know Holly, she is a Tottenham fan, but we're on mutual ground now. Yes, so. we are. Got Ross Morgan. Hey guys, um, over in Park. Denmark's issue is that they they're in the group with Spain and Germany. Tough group. That I think I do feel like that is the group of death out of the women's. Mm -hmm. That that group is just it's going to be hard, but it's yeah, going to be very good to watch. It's a hard group. It is. Um, oh, Rich again. Vivian's one hundred percent when we played the Dutch. Um, she did score twice twice against Finland on Monday. Okay, um, <laughs> Holly, it's actually coming home. Uh -huh, I'm going to the England one, these Northern Ireland on Friday up the streets. <laughs> and last one from Rich. Serena is a top coach. She's made a big improvement um, improvement for such a short time. The stars are aligned for us. We'll never be a better chance of winning for the tournament. Well, we'll see. Al, the floor's all yours. Yeah, Jones, I'll come to you. Yeah, I, was, I saw, um, I watched Sky Sports. It must have been probably no more than two weeks ago. They're speaking to Leanne Sanderson. And um, mm. she was saying that... Um, I think no, don't quote my words to this, but I think she's saying that they've they've England have had better squads. I'm I was like, well, that's an, that's, an, that's an interesting take because mm. I've seen don't get me I've seen some excellent England players over a 15, 20 odd years, to be honest with you. Um I don't know what games you saw in terms of England's build up in terms of whether it be the Arnold Clark Cup games or the last few games, but what sort of him what's impressed you the most about this? This England side, or any as and any as an any individual stood out for you. I mean, personally, I think this is this current crop of um, this current crop of players we've got at the moment is probably our best squad we've got. Um, best yeah, 
of best I've seen for a long while. And, you know, you've got to look at the likes of Hemp. Um, she's been so impressive lately as well in domestic. Uh, thing. But I, I just think it's the way we're playing now. We've got a swagger. We've got a confidence. Um, it seems teams are scared of us. And I don't remember men mm. or women at teams being really scared of England, you know. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that's the way Serena's got them playing at the moment. Um, and there's bags of talent in that squad. And it's just going to be... It's their time to shine, basically. They can do what they want on that pitch starting from tomorrow. And if they play to their full capacity, I'm I'm excited, you know what I mean? But, yeah, this current crop, uh, Sanderson, I think, yeah, I, do, I think she said that. Uh, it was something along the lines of she don't think this is the strongest or something like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember her saying it, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I tend to disagree. I'm not, don't quote me if I, <laughs> if from what I've seen. I just think this current group of group with Serena at the helm, uh, big things to come. I hope she sticks around. I hope we win it. You know, I hope she wants more after that World Cup mm. next. Yeah, that's yeah. next summer, well, which is mm. all exciting stuff for sure. Now you make a all good right. point. Um, go on, Lossie. Go on, go on, go on. Lossie. No, no, no. Continue, continue. No, I was gonna. I was probably gonna bring something back to you two guys. Obviously, my amazing co-host. But um, I think Jonesy. I think what I've sort of seen with obviously the warm-up games. I think the Arnold Club. Arnold Clark Cup games were very important because of the, the, the teams that they were playing against. Because yeah. there, a lot has been spoken about the England team in terms of the qualification games and maybe other nations not being as strong. And, you know, England don't concede many goals under, um, since Serena Week has been there. But um, I think defensively, particularly with England, that's one thing I think she, I think, I think defensively, I think they're excellent. I think they've got an yeah. abundance of versatility. In cross, across the entire back four. So sort of coming towards Lottie and G, do you do you agree that defensively England actually look even Steph Houghton's not there. I've, I even I wouldn't have taken her personally, but I think England are very, very strong defensively. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. They they are. And but the thing is that's probably the one area where we're the most experienced, actually. When you look in terms of how many appearances the girls have. Um actually from well all the forwards are the ones that are on the minimal caps um so i think that sort of mm. back four it, we were mentioning it just to each other yesterday it kind of um picks itself really at this point doesn't it um maybe you could bring one person in and change one in midfield but realistically that flat back four um is what we all think it's going to be and just touching on steph Horton, i think it was the right decision to sort of leave her out yes her experience maybe but then Millie's played alongside her for a long time as well as well as Lucy Bronze to the side so yeah. I don't think we'll miss the experience as such coming from her because I think we've got people around that were playing next to her anyway that was slot in that back four still so yeah I don't think I I mean I don't know if you agree if she should have gone or not but um yeah I think that's one of our strongest and the only real change has been in the goalkeeper situation. Um, mm. I don't know if you saw it today, but Mary Earps did the Lionesses live. Um, and she said she would never, this time a year ago, she would never have believed she would wear an England shirt again. Um, I know mm. we've had a, a lot of change with the goalkeepers. I think one's retired and one's kind of Bartley, moved yeah. on. And yeah. even Serena's brought in some of the younger girls. But she's still, and Mary's, I think she's on 18 appearances um and she's got that shirt and she's just so she didn't expect it to happen so i think yeah it's it's a fresh goalkeeper but i think with her experience the, the experienced girls in front of her as well um she always seems quite settled so i'm excited to see how she gets along because i feel like sometimes in our game she doesn't really have much to do so i'm looking forward to her slightly being challenged <laughs> mm, no well said well said let me bring in lottie no, I completely agree with everything G said. Um, leaving Steph out was the right decision. I mean, she's been a loyal servant over the years, but mm. it does come to the point, when do you take that choice to step down? Um, and also, it's the same with the captaincy. Our Leah yeah. has now, is now our captain. So, which I'm quite... most As an Arsenal fan, we're all happy about that. So, because yeah. <laughs> he changed his yes, face that, I, that below I'm, me. I'm, I'm very happy with Jimmy and Joseph, very happy with that decision, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course <laughs> you are. Tony yeah. Adams vibes, that's what it gives me, Tony Adams vibes. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, no, 100%. Mm. Um, but in, in terms of everything else, Juice, that I, I can't echo it more, I think the only interesting wild card in there for me is Rach Daly. Over at Houston Dad, she is a forward, not a defender. 
So, but she does, she's so, that versatile. It's everywhere. Absolutely it, brilliant. It, yeah, yeah. She's basically our Katie McCabe. Could she play in goal as well? Lottie, could, could you play in goal as well? I have no idea. You'd have to ask either <laughs> Ellie, Mary, or Hannah. We'll give it yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, no, oh, no, you make a good point. She she can literally play anywhere. I just want to quickly ask Jonesy. Um, obviously, I didn't see it coming. I think Lottie might agree in G in terms of where Serena's playing Leah. Because I never saw that coming as, mm. as, a, as a sort of a double pivot with um We'll talk about my fate, another fair of mine a little bit later, but um, yeah, uh, did, did, is that a surprise to you to see um, Leah being moved out of the defensive area into a more central area with, with Kira Walsh? Is that a surprise to you, or have you seen her play there before? Yeah, no, it, it was a total surprise to be honest. Like I said, when I've watched her at Arsenal, she's always been at the back in the fence, you know. Um, but no, why, you know, she's she's a talented footballer, why can't she do that job there? She, she knows the defensive role, um. And it's like the added protection for me. It's it's like a a five at the back, but it's not a five at the back if you know what I mean. It's like yeah. she's going to be there to provide that cover, and she's got a bit of bad when she can go forward as well. She can pick out a pass. We've seen her do that over at the Arsenal. So I think there's method in Serena's madness, but it's not so much madness. It, it, I think it's quite a great, great tactical um, yeah. deployment, really, to put her in there. No, I couldn't agree more with that. I mean, there's certain players you can move around. And the whole team changes. Um, we saw that with the Netherlands game, and definitely with the Switzerland's game. Switzerland's game. So, no, hundred mm. percent. Um, just to round off, Jonesy, because I've got my next guest in the back waiting to come on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get G to ask you mm -hmm. what your sweepstakes are oh. in our um, what do you call them, G? With the Golden Glove. Yeah. Yeah. We've got the Golden Glove, we've got yeah. the winners, um, top goal scorer, Golden Boot, whichever one you mm. want to go for. Yeah. Um, yes. And then England's and then best. It's a, an England, keep it with England, um, a player yeah. that you think is really going to take their time and shine this tournament. Um, so if you want to go with the overall winners first. <laughs> yeah, I went for Spain. Nice. Ooh. But that was earlier today. But I was, you know, still, I'm still going to stick with her. I'm not going to change okay. at this last hour. Yeah, and what about the uh golden glove? Uh, golden glove, I've got for Panos for Spain as well. Nice, <laughs> you never know, these things do go a bit around, don't they? Um, top goal scorer, I went for Viv, I reckon she's nice. gonna shine in this tournament. Hopefully, not too much against us, but um, I can see her definitely bagging in some goals in that group. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and then, um, the England star, yeah, I've gone for Beth Mead. I have to, I have nice. to. I reckon she's she's been brilliant for Arsenal this season, um, and I just think she's going to carry it into this tournament. You know, and you know, there's obviously Hemp as well, but I've gone with I've gone with Beth Mead, banger from Beth Mead in the final to win it. Nice. What a joke! predictions everywhere. <laughs> brilliant. I'll write them down and keep it. <laughs> no, brilliant. Jonesy, thank you for joining joining us tonight. Where can everyone Jonesy, find you if they want to drop you a follow? Cheers, yeah, just on Twitter. You see me about uh, official Jonesy, um, Arsenal fans forever. Um, pretty much um, doing my business on there with G, graphic design, that sort of stuff. If you need anything, hit me up. Always available for work. <laughs> but now, thank you guys for bringing me on tonight and letting me uh, talk about the women's game. I don't get a chance to speak about it much. Brilliant, um, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. I definitely, we'll have you back on throughout uh, throughout the month for sure. But, Jonesy, thank you for joining us tonight, and we will catch Cheers. you soon. Have a good Stop show, man, guys. Bye. Bye. Man. Bye. Man. On, well, that was yeah. good fun, wasn't it? It was good. I mean, ran a bit over, fun. bit over time, but no, not, no, not no, too bad. Good. Not too bad. So, my next two guests are my regulars. I've got the one of them is is king of the dad jokes, and that is Adam Saltafor. How are you, Adam? Hey, evening, all. How are you? I am live, live from Manchester itself. Um, on, <laughs> five minutes from Old Trafford. Um, I am. I am in. You know. I'm. I'm there and, and ready to go. So yes. Um, all. Good, all set here. Nice. Oh, brilliant! I will be joining you tomorrow. And I've got my yep. other favourite in the back as well. Um, he's usually my stat man for my Arsenal <laughs> Lady Show, and that is Matt. How are you, Matt? Ah, evening, Matt. You're mute, Matt. 
Made a blunder already. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Uh, we're all, yeah, all good. All good. So, right, I'm going to hand over to Albert and I'm going to let him throw the first question at you guys. Oh, yes. Good. <laughs> no. I've never, I've never, Don't sound so solemn. Adam, it's nice to meet you. It's first nice time. Yeah, Absolutely, nice I've been looking forward to this. It's a pleasure. No, it's Lana. great to get you. Two, great to get you two guys on. So, um, I think for me, I want to ask you two. I'm going to speak to get to Adam first. Um, I think it's a good problem in terms of we talk about the England number ten role. Um, Ooh. the obvious protagonist of you've got Frank Kirby, um, you've got Georgia Stanway, and obviously you've got Ella Toon as well. Um, what do you think Serena Wigman will do in terms of who gets that? sort of role and who would you like to see in that number 10 role as such Adam yes good question because it's one I've actually thought about uh, and read about so uh, my instinct is you'll probably go Kirby because of the experience it's not the role it's not the one I would go for um, I've seen Kirby play in quite a few um, England tournaments um, she made her debut back in 2015 in Canada yes. and and she yes. scored she scored one goal in every tournament but I never have felt that she's really you know, seeing the best of her. Um, certainly when you think about, when you see her play for Chelsea, especially in that cup final. Um, but you see how great she is then. And then you, and it comes to tournaments. I mean, she wasn't great at the 2019 tournament. And I think it no. hasn't helped. It's been, she's been played out of position a fair amount. Now, I think Serena, if she was to play Kirby, will play her at 10. What I think will betray her this time is that she's been out with fatigue issues since February. Um, and I, I'm looking at her in the friendlies, I wasn't that convinced. I mean, in the Switzerland game, she had a really good opportunity, like the first minute mm. or so, duffed it, mm. and then just disappeared from the game completely. And then I think she got hooked for two after about six or so minutes. Um, I think she will pick Kirby, though, just because of a tournament experience. Um, the player I'd like to see in that position is Ella Toon. Um, yeah, I, she, she's pl- she's played... She's, yeah, she's played at Old Trafford before, so she knows the ground. Obviously, she's a, Man- she's a Manchester United player through and through, and I think she'll revel uh, in that position. What I would say is, as it's been made quite clear in these warm-ups, that England are a second-half team. So it may actually be in Serena's thinking that she wants Ella Toon to be the prime player, but she'll bring her on in the second half, maybe when the Austri- Austrian defence has been tied out with like the pace of Mead and Ham or Kelly or whoever it is she chooses to play on the wings. Um, so... Toon is my pick for 10, so it's more of an Ella 10 than an Ella Toon. Um, but I think Kirby will be the one that's... Sorry. Uh, I think Kirby will be the one that um, Serena will pump for. Mm. No, Adam, good shot. You know what? I actually think... I think Stanway might get the nod, you know. It's a fair I shout. She, no. Yeah, I think she will. The only thing against her, I think she can be a bit erratic, especially in the tackles. Yes. I mean, we've, we've, we've seen a few... And defensively, it's a bit of a wobble, which is... Well, it was always funny to see a Gareth Taylor player at defence. Um, it was just, you know, he might as well make Paul Scholes a right back. I mean, what could go wrong? Um, but no, I th- she's got the experience and, you know, she's got, she can score goals. She's got some, you know, she's good from the spot. She's got some good goals, goals for us in qualifying. Um, so it is a flip of the coin between um, Stanway and Toon. If, if it had been anywhere else, if it had been at Brighton's ground, or if it had been at you know, St Mary's, I would have gone Stanway. But just for this occasion, because it's Old Trafford, I think that just tips in Toon's favour. And I was really excited by Toon's friends, especially against the Netherlands. When she came on, you know, I know Van Vienna had a bit of a wobble with the, with the shot, yeah, but yeah, she was... Yeah, yeah. She, she and Russo were electric. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. no, Toon, for me, so, uh, will, is my pick for 10. No, Adam's um, um, great shout, man. Matt, sort of the same question to you. I, what I'd say is um, I, w- I like Kirby because I think in terms of if I'm talking about Kirby and probably Georgia Stanway, Georgia Stanway gets into great areas in terms of making runs. Um, but I think decision-making-wise, Kirby's probably a little bit better, in my humble opinion, um, in the final thirds especially. And what's your, what's your thoughts, Matt, sort of coming into the tournament with England? Yeah, um, I think... Franco with coming back up match fitness levels, she hasn't played many minutes, even in the friendlies. That doesn't really help. On top of that, uh, she's been have she's been in and outside since the season started. She went away and then last minute she was given a call up to the Lionesses for this tournament. I wasn't expect I don't know if I was expecting her to go because it was almost like a similar situation that Steph caught in where you thought, would she have gone, wouldn't she have gone, because of the lack of minutes. But she played the final in uh, the FA Cup final at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, 
it, it is one of those things when I, when you see Fran Kirby play, you can see how special she is, but she hasn't reached that yet. So yeah. it would be great to see her develop more at this tournament. Um, if I'm looking at who would start, I would probably say you want Stanway to start more than anyone else at the moment. I understand the erratic thing, but for me, again, when Stanway was on, she was she was up for that game more than anyone else. She was happy to do those tough tackling and taking the yellow cards and things like that. Um, so that will be the important thing is that we've got players that will be up and ready for defenders who uh, sorry defending attacking midfielders sorry that will be happy to take the card for a team and just be uh ready for whatever austria throw because we know what they're going to be about they'll try and defend as deeply as they can we know they've got a decent goalkeeper or say de- decent we should say well class should i say <laughs> <laughs> and a brilliant right back as well shall we add to that as well so <laughs> Best um, keeper in the league. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, no penalties let in. And we've got a, they've got an amazing striker in there as well that I'm sure someone will probably talk about whoever's got Austria in that <laughs> team. So it's it's going to be one of those games that I think the Georgia Stanway's made for that more than yeah. anyone else. Um, no, well I, said. No, go on. No, definitely well said, as Albert just said. Um, Speaking of Manu Zinsberger and Mary, and, and I'm going to bring you Mary Epps into this. We know we know Zinsberger hasn't hit the penalty in a long, long, long time, and she comes up against all of our forwards. Maybe not the Arsenal girls, but most of the forwards all the time, all season round. How do you think she's going to cope up at Old Trafford? I know we, we know Mary Epps will absolutely revel in it because she's Man United through and through. But how do you think both keepers are going to do? From tomorrow, I'm going to come to Matt first. I th- I think this is going to be an important one, and this is where, uh, like the game at, at Switzerland uh, for them to say goodbye in a huge stadium in Zurich was important, and it would have. I don't know if Austria did the same thing, but it would have been nice to sort of get that stadium experience so that I would have been prepared more for this match. I think Manu thrives more on the more fans that are there, the better she feels. I mean, uh, they've also been to, I believe it was Wembley. They were at Wembley, I believe. So they've got some sort of experience of stadium atmosphere. And I think certain players will thrive and thrive on it. Some of them will be quite nervous. Marriott may have the upper hand on this one just because it's Old Trafford. But to be honest, the, I, I you could probably have uh, Sylvain Wiltord probably turning up to uh, give her a phone call. And say, Don't worry about this. I've got your back or something like that. Just to sort of rub it in a little bit more towards the uh, United players. Good time. No. Brilliant. Adam? It's an interesting one because it's, it's, for, for Zinsberger, it's basically a WSL match because of you know her relationship with the, with the England team. Um we did play Austria in the qualifiers, and it's, it's the, it was the toughest one. I think we only won one nil. I think it was a well white goal because you know she scores most of them. Um, so it's very slim margins, and I think Zinsberger will be key to that. Um, the difference is, is I don't think the Austrian defence is as strong as say our defence, uh, the Arsenal mm-hmm. defence in this case. So she will get more exposure, um, and I think obviously England will attack differently um, mm-hmm. than some of the um, Dosel sides. I think she'll have a good game and I think she will be worked. She will be tough. Um, I mean, if we get a penalty, um, I'm kind of torn because I, I want her to keep her record, but then I, I want her to score it. So it's, it's a bit, bit sort of halfway half. Although, oh goodness, our, our, rec- our record at spot kicks is, as, as having um, suffered the Olympics in 2019 is not great. So you never know. I think she'll have a good game, but I think that we will be able to um, out- outmaneuver her. But you know, she will um, she'll find simple position. Just you just got to yeah hope if we get an early goal, then hopefully that'll be fine. Because the longer it goes on, the more confidence she will have. And you know, with that was it seventy thousand fans or whatever, it, it's only going to get more and more nerve wracking. And I don't want to be nerve wracking this this time. Um, you know, tomorrow I want to be enjoying the game, not not you know watching it from behind my fingers. No, I, um, I'm definitely on the, on the same page 
as you there, Tamara. I mean, this is this the one thing we don't want to see as England fans, is it, Jay? No, that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's like um, there's been a few questions flying around of will the occasion and will the the mm. number of the crowd potentially have any factor in um, yeah. the type of game it is tomorrow? It could, could it be a little it bit of a wobbly game? It is a complete sellout. So 70, Opening game, 70, then 8, 000, if, if we're completely honest, they're not used to the that level. 75,000 mm. people is a lot of people. Um, <sighs> and if you're not consistently playing, you know, you, you do get big crowds at the FA Cup, for example, and and throughout the league, they're a bit lower or maybe more in the Champions League. Um, but Matt, do you think that could be that could the kind of atmosphere and the type of game could maybe cause the game to actually not be as free flowing as we would hope tomorrow? Perhaps yes. Uh, I think Austria will probably have the benefit of the doubt, really, because they can sort of come off this hands free and say, "Well, England have to do something here. We can just sit sit back, relax, and do our mm. thing." They came to these Euros in the, uh, after turn up for uh, in the semi-finals and pretty much did the same thing that they were doing in the qualifying, winning one nil and two nils and I think they're happy to do that no matter what the stadium size is. Um, if I had to pick players out that I think would struggle, uh, Toon actually was very <laughs> bad in that game at Old Trafford against Everton. I, I don't know what it is. Every time I see a play for Man United, she just doesn't seem to thrive very well. Um, she she just seems very off it. So I don't I don't know why she was in the squad to begin with. And when you have three number tens, if it, if it were, it kind of makes it a bit uh, odd to have three uh, attacking midfielders. Considering that you could have an extra <laughs> central midfielder, say yeah. Uh, Jordan Nobbs or another Jill, someone like a Jill Scott that could perhaps fill in that midfield a little bit more. Um, but again, these sorts of things will be key. I think Alessia Russo will be hoping and praying that she gets on that pitch. She scored a brilliant hat trick against Everton and that height caused so much chaos. So if she does start, I think she'll be running up and down the, the uh, training pitch and <laughs> really looking forward to that game. And I think she'll thrive on that mm. if she is starting ahead of Ellen White, but I don't think that she will, if I'm honest. Uh, that, do you know what? That's a really good point. I mean, me and G were talking about this earlier. Um, Ellen White's not droppable, is she? I mean, how it's do hard, you, isn't it? How do you drop Ellen White, Adam? Can you even drop her? Yes. Uh, just wanted to follow up on G's earlier point about the, the, the crowd. Um, England had been here before because in 2005 um, they opened their home Euros in Manchester. It was in the empty had or city of Manchester, as we've known at the time. Um, and, and, they, and, they, and they almost fumbled it. They went 2-0 up. They weren't playing great. And Finland got it back to 2 all. Um, and it's only because seconds later, Karen Carney, you know, as we've seen in that superb intro, um, Karen Carney come in and dink that shot into the top corner bailed out England. So they have fumbled in this environment when all of a sudden the, the, the world, well, UK eyes are upon them. I think it will be an interesting test when we go to uh, this particular game to see how far they've advanced, uh, not only from a talent perspective, but from a mental perspective. And I think they are a better shape mentally um, and will be able to handle the pressure. You know, they've, they've played in, you know, the, the Emirates Stadium, Old Trafford, they've played in the Cup Finals. You know, some of them played in that England um, Germany game at, um, at Wembley. You know, they lost the game, but it was a huge audience. So, the, the notion of playing in front of 70,000 fans is not overly foreign to them. Um, while infrequent, is, you know, they, they will be used to it. As for dropping Ellen White, I think you can. Um, I think we, mm. we saw her play. <laughs> you can. Um, we saw her play against um, Belgium, and, you know, she looked rusty. She never since had COVID. She never got a chance to win a space back. Um, my feeling is that the three strikers that we've seen um, start um, in case of White, Beth England, uh, Ellen White, Beth England, and uh, um, Russo. Russo is the one that I've been more, most excited about, um, mm -hmm. which may yeah. mean that she'll, which means that therefore she'll likely come off the bench because that's how England work now. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. It could be Beth England. Uh, Russo is the one I'm more excited for. Um, you know, purely on merit, I would start her. Um, mm -hmm. I think. There's, 
the problem I've always had with England is the over over reliance on a single player, and and that you know White carried us through you know twenty nineteen, and she carried us at the Olympics, um, and I think that does lead to a bit of an imbalance. I think you know we might be nearing the end of the White train. She's very good and you know very mm. reliable, very experienced. I'm sure she will score goals in this tournament. But um, for me, I would start Russo. Again, because like Matt said, she's played at Old Trafford. She scored at Old Trafford. You know, she knows her way around the pitch. And I think having that pitch familiarity cannot be underestimated. Um, so she would be um, she would be my pick. Mm. I agree. It's, it's one of those, isn't it? You um, There's always going to be someone that probably won't start, um, mm. but could definitely be there pushing. And I don't think well, it could... Yeah. You know, the way she was playing against um, Switzerland the other day, she chased every single thing down, you know, even mm. to the last second she'd um, slide to keep the ball in to pass to someone else. And you've seen her create chances from not giving up. So it's just one of those, it's another another type of player we can bring in that maybe has a bit more fresher legs than Ellen. Um, but it's difficult because of what she, um, what she brings, her record speaks for itself really, doesn't it? So... I think we'll see, and at least we now ha- we know we have a good option from oh, the bench. Yes. If anything was to happen, or you know, she doesn't get her form in this tournament, we've we've got someone else to come on, really, haven't we? Now, absolutely, we're not relying on Jodie Taylor Plan B. We have a bit more variety <laughs> yeah. now. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, That's definitely, it, yeah. definitely. Okay, boys, um, I'm gonna throw at you now. What teams did you get in G sweepstakes? Um, and who's your person got... of interest from each team? Right. I got Germany, um, uh, which I thought was a bit of a luck of a draw because, um, as anyone knows, they are the historically the uh, greatest of the uh, European clubs. Um, mm-hmm. They've won it uh, eight times, the Euros, mm-hmm. uh, winning it six in a row between 1995 and 2013. And during that period, they also won two World Cups as well. Obviously, this was before, you know, the women's we were, where it is now. They were basically like the Arsenal, just ahead of the curve. Um, and uh, yes, they've uh, had their clash of England. Um, the beat is in 1995, 6-2 on aggregate. Um, in the 2001, the beat is the group stage, 3-0. And most memorably, we played them in the 2009 final when we lost 6-2. So um, it's, they are you know, historically very good. However, I say historically, recently it's been a bit of a drop-off. Um, since, um, 2013 was the last time they won a trophy. They had a shock loss to Denmark in the quarterfinals in 2017. That sort of triggered sort of their sort of the end of their era. Um, and they didn't do that well at the World Cup, last World Cup either, they lost to um, Sweden, I think, in the quarterfinals. So they're going a bit through a bit of a transitional phase at the moment, You're looking to rebuild, build the next generation. There's plenty of talent coming through. Um, didn't really get the chance to shine at the Arnold Clark Cup because um, we beat them with Millie Bright, top scorer, getting a goal from an off side position. Um, <laughs> my, my, person of inter- my person of interest is uh, Tabea Vassman, a player that I'm yes. sure if we, yeah, if you, if I you were watching. Her. You remember her? Yeah, so yep. um, uh, me and Lottie, we both went um, to the Emirates uh, to watch Wolfsburg in the Champions League and she was the one who scored against us. Um, yep. She also scored two goals against Chelsea at Kings Meadow and scored two yep. goals against Chelsea in a 4 0 thrashing away at the away match. Yep. So very, very good. She was the, uh, scored 10 goals in the Champions League, just one yep. behind Pateas. Um, so she will be the uh, top scorer, top scoring forward in the Champions League, actually able to play at the Euros, um, with the, obviously the recent Euros found. So definitely my one uh, to watch. Um, if, if if Germany do advance through, I think she'll be key to their hopes. Um, I'll give you my other team as well, which is France, um, nice. which is probably the yeah. and, and tip, antithesis to Germany because Germany are ruthless and efficient and organised. And France and I for three. Um, absolute ball of chaos at the moment. There's plenty of talent in there. Um, you yeah. know, Leon won the Champions League. They won the Champions League this year, um, and they've been uh, they've been one of these teams that have always been promising, but have never quite fulfilled their potential. Um, England had a nasty run. We played them four tournaments in a row, um, lost the first three, one of them traditionally on penalties, um, but did beat them in 2017 when Jodie Taylor got the winner. So we'll remember that one. That was a bit of a momentous moment. Unfortunately, we played the Netherlands next. Um, <laughs> did had, had a host, host of the World Cup, I thought, in 2019. It was a brilliant World Cup. I think it inspired most of us to uh, join the women's bandwagon. So for that, we owe them our, you know, Phoebus thanks. Um, though the team didn't do that greatly. They went out in quarters to the USA. I um, can't remember who they played after that. Um, now, the player I've gone for, I'm cheating. I'm not going for a player. I'm going for the manager, which is uh, Corinne <laughs> Curry. And, and uh, I discussed it with Lottie, and I think it's only right because she is the centre of attention of this women's football team. 
Um, she's controversial and she's made controversial decisions that have generated uproar in the fan base. Um, Eugene Le Sommer and Amandine Henry um, have both mm. been axed from the team, um, which caused some consternation when most of us who watched the Champions League final saw a splendid long range effort from Henri against Barcelona. Um, yeah, well, great course. Course. great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and so she's, and, but she's not in the team. Um, not the first time the manager's called a controversy. Um, years ago, she actually stripped Renard of the captaincy, although mm-hmm. she's now got it back. Um, so she's basically, she falls at everybody. If you go onto her Wikipedia page, there's a controversy section as long as your arm, but somehow she stays in the job. Um, so <laughs> Clearly, you know, I think the women's FA are just happy just to let them keep on going and not, you know, interfere. So um, there's antagonism and complaints all around it. And it just reminds me of the 2010 World Cup um, when a certain uh, Raymond Dominic took uh, France to South Africa yeah. and, oh, had, the most, yeah. and yeah. had the most hilarious, you know, we had strikes, we had strikes, we had players being sent home and they lost to South Africa in the last group stage game. So at the moment, the French immensely talented the likes of you know Mary Antoinette Renard and I'm sure we got a person you know you kind of to play yourself you know um, what they got in the you know there but it's they just bounce between sort of brilliance and the bizarre um and it, it, you don't know what France you're going to get they could go on and have an amazing run and win the thing or they could crash out on the group stage um I'm yeah, hoping for the latter <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping for the latter because that'll be funny yeah. um because especially after you know having suffered seeing England did the same thing um uh, in previous Euros so she is the one she's going to be keeping my arm because I think the this this whole campaign will rest on her her decision making and her management and if it's anything like it's come before I think it could be very entertaining. <laughs> nice. Matt, who did you get? I got a bit of luck, really. I got England. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, you weren't the host. I, when that came out and you dropped it in one guy, the first thing I looked for was England. Got, Who's got England? Got and it was you. you, got the, you got and yeah. yeah, so it was kind of hard because we kind of set ourselves a little target of no WSL players, but I thought <laughs> what I would do. Daily, that's it. Gone. <laughs> yeah, that's the only player. But I thought about this, and I thought about it long and hard because this is going to be a crucial moment. And if I was to look at England squads, where are we quite light? We're quite light in the midfield area, but apart from that, defensive uh, defensively we're good. It's just the goalkeeper that concerns me the most. Mm-hmm. And just to back that up, Mary Earps has conceded one goal in every game uh, per game that she's uh, played in over the last year. Mm. Uh, she, but some good things is that she comes for seven point three of the crosses and collects them, and but she is able to rush out the goal, to, uh, clearing the ball when needed to, with a success rate of 0. 0.82 to out of one. Uh, she started originally at Reading, left to Wolfsburg, came back to United. But before she left Wolfsburg, she won the Frauenbund Bottom Liga as well. So she got an experience there. And that's an important thing to have someone that's got some sort of winning mentality, even if it was just for one season and abroad. Um, but this is a, a, a message to Mary Earps. Please, please make sure that you get you can prove me wrong. <laughs> I've been yes, yeah. for a long time. I, I, know, I don't I, want I to see you fun <laughs> and being all oh, there's a and then and then Viv Miedemars and scores uh, straight near the oh, post. Let it like go, she did. Matt. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hold the debt on one goal. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But but she did exactly the same when Everton came to Old Trafford. The first minute of the game, Claire Emsley goes and score goes down one side and she cuts cuts in. To the um, into the area, and then she just lets it lets the ball go straight across her, and she doesn't reach it in time. So things like that, I want to see her improve on, and this is a big tournament for her. So hopefully she can get on with that. <laughs> Fingers crossed, she can prove me right or wrong. Uh, I'll, I'll just on that. I'll just on that one, Matt. I, just, I am surprised Earp scored the number one because I think all of us watching on for quite some time, I thought Roebuck would have been the one that would be. The number yeah. one. I think it's fascinating that it's, it's not her and it's it's Erps. Um, I do think Erps deserve a chance to it, but I would also say that there is now we've actually got quality on the bench that could step in and not have a drop off. Yes. You know, if, if Erps fumbles, if she has a bad game, Roebuck is straight in or Hampton is straight in and mm. it'll just be as it is. And I think that's really interesting. But no, we'll see what Erps can do. Um, see if she can prove you wrong. I hope she proves you wrong. I hope she stars and uh, we shall see what happens. 
Yeah. yeah. And my other player of team was Iceland. So unfortunately, <laughs> me and Adam have gone for uh, Arsenal Payne FC. And I've gone for <laughs> Serena Jane Young's Jota, who actually got the two assists that knocked in. Uh, oh, I nearly said England out. Arsenal out of the Champions League in the uh, oh, no. second leg. Oh, yes. No. Uh, so her fluff shot was the assist to uh, Jill Rod, and then her cross oh. was the one that Willie's winning some put into the back oh. of the net. Um, I just I'm I'm going to be quite interested actually because I'm going to be going to the Belgium Iceland games, so I'll be able Ooh. to see her live. Okay. Uh, she's very pacey. She's quite young at 21 years old. She's going to be wanting to run past defenders left, right, and centre. She'll she'll cause chaos. And yeah. with that Belgium team, the way that they played, I think it'll be an interesting match up for that game. For that's for sure. Hats off to the pronunciation, Matt. That was that was flawless. <laughs> hmm. That was brilliant. I wouldn't have been able to do that. So well done, <laughs> well done, Matt. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm going to hand over to Gina so she can run for our categories again. To see what you boys have both have chosen, because I haven't yeah. actually had a look yet. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you've already I, done it, but we've got the sheet on the go. Um, but yeah, we'll take them I, now, just so it's uh, recorded. Um, I can't remember what I picked. <laughs> oh, right. We can try again. Um, Adam, so who is your overall winner? Portugal. Portugal. Do you say? Wow, that is yes, a wild card. And- and, okay. and that's the, and there's a very good reason for that. Obviously, I want England to win, so I can't back them. I have to have two horses in the race. And I'm going for a Denmark Euro 92 vibe. Um, those of you oh, may remember, Denmark yeah, did not we, qualify for Euro 92, yeah. but another, but the hosts got, I can't remember who the hosts were, but I think it was, it was Czech Republic. Yugoslav, they lost Yugoslavia. Yeah, Yugoslavia. Yeah, yeah. Apologies, yeah. Yugoslavia. So there's a war going on, obviously, there. They lost the right to host, so Denmark were drafted in uh, to host the tournament, um, and, qualifying, and they won the they whole won. thing. They beat Germany in the final. So I'm going for nice. a repeat of that, and Portugal coming out of nowhere, despite not qualifying for the tournament, and winning the whole winning. thing. So that's the vibe <laughs> I'm going for. Um, nice. I like that. <laughs> um, golden Glove? Uh, golden Glove? I've gone for Lindahl at, of Sweden. Um, Sweden obviously nice. rightly won the favourites um, for the uh, for the tournament. Um, we saw how good they were at the World Cup. They beat us in the bronze medal match. And I think they're going to be very strong defensively. And I think it, behind that, the back line, is a very good goalkeeper in Lindell. So she is going to be my golden black. Nice. Good shot. Um, England star? Williamson. We're going for our captain. Um, this is a huge step up for Williamson. Um, mm-hmm. So far, the only thing she's been able to flex is the fact that she scored a penalty two days after it was awarded. Um, but I think this was a massive... <laughs> if you know, you know. Um, this is a massive moment for her, stepping into some very big uh, football boots after uh, she stepped forward and lost the captaincy and then obviously left the squad. I think she's up for it. I think this is going to be her moment. You know, her face is everywhere, on billboards, on posters, on crisp packets. And I think she is going to rise to the uh, to the mantle. And I think we're going to see a really good um, captain's performance from Williamson. Um, it just down to whether Serena opts the player in the midfield or player at the centre back. Um, I think that's an intriguing debate. I think yeah. it will vary on the opposition, but I think I think we'll see a really good catch form to Williamson. I think this is her moment. Nice. Okay. And then final one, your top goal scorer. Uh, top goal scorer. Oh, and I've got a value. I think I've got a valued player as well. Um, top scorer is uh, Vasmuth, as we explained, um, for the same reasons for earlier. Um, my valued player is uh, Lina Fierenstein, um, a player who I saw yeah. between the Netherlands. Looked very dangerous. I've heard much about her from some of my yeah. Dutch friends, and um, seeing her in action again in, in the Ellen Road, she looked very dangerous. I think that the Netherlands are going to, I don't think the Netherlands are going to do well, but I think she will be a star in that team and uh, mm-hmm. one to watch. Nice, thank you. And just quickly, the same for you, Matt. So, tournament winners overall? I went for Sweden. I think that they're going to be looking to add those gold medals in the Olympics. They've been pushing for a while to be winning things. So, it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Yeah, nice. And Golden Glove? I gave it to Carolina Graham Hansen. I thought she would be able to give, be given a chance to shine, especially away from the Barcelona. She's not the main main uh, <laughs> main player there. So if she's got a chance to shine. Uh, Frieda Mann and playing the balls in, I thought it would be quite interesting, especially with how Austria and Northern Ireland play in this group. Yeah, nice. Um, England star for you? 
uh, I gave it to Frank Kirby. I thought that if any time mm. to show what you're ready for, why not at a home tournament where you're going to have the most backing? Yeah. Good shout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Hello. finally, um, top goal scorer. Oh, we just did top score. That was Hanson. Oh, so what's your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your goalkeeper? What's your goalkeeper? Oh, I, oh, no, I said golden glove. Oh, golden yeah, glove. Gave oh. Uh, I gave it. I think I've done it so badly wrong. I've given it to Paul. Well, you, you, you've done the reverse. You've done the reverse. You've done the reverse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. cool. Uh, have, have, have you done the valuable? Because most valuable, I was. I went for uh, Katoto. Oh, okay. Ah, nice. Yeah. Never had a Katoto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you for that. We'll keep an eye on it as it goes along. Okay, boys. I have my next very special guest in the back. Boys, where can everyone find you if they wanted to drop your follow? Um, if you want to avoid me and block me like any ten individual, <laughs> you can find me at the at of at Adam Salterfort, full of women's football nonsense and articles and memes and stupidity. But if you like that, I, I have no idea why, but you can yeah, find me there. <laughs> and my Twitter is at Matt L R twenty eight. Okay, brilliant boys. Thank you nice. so much oh, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Have a great evening. I'm sure Thanks you're going to drop in, drop, drop in on us the rest of the month, but definitely catch up with you too soon. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, boys. You. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, you. Boys. Good stuff, lots. No, hundred percent, de definitely, uh, definitely good stuff. I mean, that was really good chat. I know yeah. I've got my very good friend in the Lebanon in the back. He's been waiting for about twenty minutes, so I am going to bring him in, and that is my very good friend James Rowe. How are you, Jay? Evening all. How are we all? Good Jay, long time, James, man. Good to see you. A long Great time no speak, Albert. How are you keeping? Are you keeping well? I am keeping well. We've we've been an anticipation for this tournament, James. We I heard you coming on, so I said I've got to be on, man. I have to be on. <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, grateful for the invitation and, and really nice to talk about the Netherlands as well. You know, Adam just touched on the Lynn F. Bielenstein, I was fortunate enough to interview her when uh, she first started out at Bayern Munich. And she's wow. recently uh, signed for Juventus. Her attitude is first class. So it's going to be very, very interesting. Although the Netherlands are in a completely different place than the last they tournament are. where, they, they, where they won it, you know. Yeah. And uh, no, it's um, a little bit different, but there's still quality there. But mm. it's not going to be as easy as, as last time round. No, definitely. Um I know me and you were talking about the Netherlands game, the England Netherlands game, and you were very mutual. You were hoping for a draw. Um, <laughs> yeah. But was that scoreline a surprise to you? Massively. Uh, yeah. Massively. And Mark Parsons took full responsibility at the end, mm -hmm. you know, about, about yeah. the decisions that he made. And also with Sharida Spitzer, you know, as she said herself, if the penalty goes in, it's a completely different game. Uh, England, the Netherlands, for me, it's all you want, whether it's men's football or women's football, you just want the game to be as the best game as possible. You want it to be over as soon as possible. As I was born and raised in one country and I've lived in the other one for 16 years now. So you just want to see a good game of football. So it's always a, a game which kind of tugs at the heart uh, strings. But a fantastic result for um, England. You, you really see how uh, Serena Wiechmann is, uh, is, is showing her class. You know, everything she did at the Netherlands, she's doing it in England. And um, one of the points I wanted to make was uh, Lynette Bielenstein herself, when I spoke to her, she said that Serena Wiechmann is, is fantastic about making ties between players, friendships within play between players that really want to work hard for one another and working with the collective of what the team actually can become and what they can achieve together. And you really see that she's uh, replicating that with England at this precise moment in time. Yeah, no, definitely, mm. definitely, one hundred percent agree with that. I mean, like we see these girls play week in week out. Well, the Arsenal girls, like the likes of Viv and Mead, and like we can see the friendships are there. But I think fine with the England girls, the friendship is a lot stronger, and it's grown so much. Much where me, me and Georgina have been doing our series over over the World Cup qualifiers, um, even the, the warm ups to this. I mean, it's, it has been incredible. Um, mm. Albert, I'm going to hand over to you. Mute. Yeah, James. Firstly, again, like, thanks for your patience. By the way, yeah, doing a, doing a preview show, lots of guests. It's it's, it's not always it's a bit tricky, but 
yeah, I think James, obviously, you've been living in um, the lovely Holland. Um, I mm. think the main talking point for a lot of England fans is obviously the appointment of Serena Weigman. Um, yeah, I just managed to catch um, there was a documentary going around, it was Serena Weigman making the manager. Um, mm. great watch, great, great watch. Um, what, what separates uh, James, um, from other coaches um, in the, either the women's game or maybe even the men's game? What, what makes her so good? Her attention to detail. Her attention to detail is massive. And giving players confidence. That's, that's what she always does. She always gives players, whether they're seasoned players or whether they're younger players, she always gives them confidence. And uh, if you look, for example, take Lynn Billums who's really going to be the breakout star for the Netherlands at this tournament. She's, I mean, she's, she's done so well to come back from a back injury and she's ready to go. And she's also received instructions from Mark Parsons that they want to, to build out from the back. They want to utilise the wings. And her, her choice to go from FC Twente to Wolfsburg, being so young as well, shows massive maturity. And there's, there's elder statesmen in there as well as obviously Sharida Spitzel with um, you know, 200 caps. And I was fortunate enough to interview her when she was playing for Valerenga in Norway. And she was telling me that she's been involved with the Dutch national team for since the age of 16. So it's a long, long time. But uh, in, in, in the case of Selina Wiegman, it's very much, you know, her attention to detail, giving players confidence and, and, and going out there and enjoying yourself. Because this tournament is massive for women's football. And one thing that I'd like to advocate as well, it's the same in the men's game. Anybody watching this tournament, whether they discover a new player, stick with that player at club level. It's something that I love to do at, um, in the men's game, particularly at club level, where you discover a young player and you stick with them and you follow their career. And I think a lot of people watching this particular tournament can do the same because there'll be many, many great stars on show. There'll be some breakout players as well. And you see with the attention the women's game is, is receiving, how also the players are maturing. Because you've got to remember, a lot of these Dutch players, they would play football with boys in their youth. They wasn't always surrounded by women playing against yeah. fellow women. And the cases of, I think, Jackie Groenen, and I believe Jill Lord as well, uh, they were playing against boys in their youth. So it would be a boys' team and they would be able to play. And they would play really, really well. So it just goes to show how the... The pathway of certain players is really important and making the decisions at club level. Obviously, FC Twente here in the Netherlands are, are a, massive, um, a massive club domestically, really pushing Ajax all the way. And you see how, um, how PSV as well are looking to become even stronger in, in the domestic game. And that also bears fruit at international level. Um, just quickly, in. I'm interested to, to find out what it was like over there when Serena sort of left the... Uh, Netherlands team to come across to England was it like a surprise when it happened or do you kind of think she got to that point where she'd completed one of the biggest things she could have and she, it was just a new challenge she wanted well first and foremost to pull to become England national team manager was was too much Matthew, Matthew. She, she even said herself you know this is the this is the birthplace of football you, you can't turn it down and um, there was always kind of rumours as to would she go wouldn't she go but the pull to become England manager was just too much in the end. And also becoming European champion, having spoken to a lot of those players that achieved success in 2017, a lot of them said to me that only after the tournament did they actually realise what they had achieved. You know, with the, um, the, the tributes coming out, with the, um, the way they were received at the, um, in the different cities for what they'd achieved as a collective. And it's they've they've all written history together, and that's the most important thing. And I think I think this tournament will also show that it's tournament football. People love to kind of yeah. uh, before the event say what's going to happen, but they need to remember whether it's amateur level or whether it's the highest level, there are always surprises in tournament football, and and this tournament will be no different. Yeah. Um. Do you also think there's any the players may be feeling an extra bit of added pressure because they are the current holders of the the trophy? Potentially, but the the preparation with a manager who also has no command of the local language, is, it means that the ingredients are a little bit different. Yeah. If, you take, when, uh, if you take a run up to 2017, being based in the Netherlands and having the tournament in the Netherlands, 
it was like fever pitch. You know, everybody was excited to be hosting such an event. It was also wasn't just held in the biggest cities. Also, Daventer, for example, home of Go Ahead Eagles, was used as a stadium. And um, you see now that with a, with a, a manager who's managed in the, in the United States, a manager who's predominantly doing everything in English in the English language. Of course, English is the second language of the Netherlands. Everybody learns English from the age of five. But if you if you really want to get your message across, you know, you've really got to be able to to do it in the, in the mother tongue and. As a wise uh, football manager once told me, you can be the greatest manager in the world if you can't get your message across. That's you done. Rightness. So I think, yeah. but um, I think they've learned a lot with the defeat to England. But um, it's really got to kind of come out the blocks firing with a, an opening day win against uh, Sweden on Saturday. I think that's going to be vitally important. Hmm. No, definitely. Um, I've I've been watching the Lemons for a while. Um, and I think for me, their weaknesses around the back is at the back with them at the moment. It's a lot weaker than the rest of the field. Do you mm. think Serena will look to exploit that like she did in the friendly if we do come up against them at all? Potentially. And also, it's going to be really strange for her. I mean, obviously, playing in a friendly setup is a little bit different, but at a competitive level, you know, to face your country of origin at international level, as a, as a manager once told me, Henk Visman, who managed. Uh, Armenia against the Netherlands in the 2006 World Cup qualifying. He was up against Marco van Basten. And I said to him, I said, what was it like for you as a Dutchman to, uh, to play against your national team uh, in uh, international level to manage Armenia against the Netherlands? And he said, well, James, it's, it's a real mixed emotion. It's one, it's one that gives you a massive kick, gives you a massive, massive adrenaline rush, but it's also very strange. And he also gave the anecdote of after an hour when it was nil-nil in Yevren, he looked across to see Marco van Basten be a little bit agitated. And I think in the case of uh, Selina Wiegman, it is her country of origin. She achieved fantastic success here at domestic and international level. But if they do face one another, she will be extremely determined because she's extremely committed as England manager. You see that in her press conferences, in the way she talks. I, um, I translated for you as well the... Um, a, a Dutch media interview she gave um, uh, not not long before the start of the tournament where she was saying about the commitment involved being raring to go and hopefully writing history with England. So it's a fantastic opportunity for England and it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Hmm. No, most definitely. Uh, Alves, have you got any more? James, do us a favor because we're just we just we're getting a little bit of feedback when you're speaking. So going go come out and come back in, and then okay. Russell bring you back in. Yeah, and we'll we'll, okay. we'll carry on because there's much more we want to ask you. Trust me. Yeah, okay, it's fine. I'll right, do right. that. Hang on one right. moment. All right. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry okay. about that, guys. That's all right. Um, they happen, they happen. Well, well, James is gone. What I am going to do is we're going to look. Up, we've got nine players for you all that all ones to watch throughout the tournament. And I'm going to bring up my first three. And G, I'm going to let you talk about your girl, your favourite. <laughs> you absolutely go for it. Hempo. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard, isn't it? Because you always, I think, with internationals, feel mm -hmm. a little bit sentimental with your club players as well. Um, yeah. But for me, ever since really getting into it and following it with you on our shows, um, the standout player for me has always mm. been Lauren Hemp. Um, we were we were desperately waiting for her to score her first goal, weren't we? Um, yeah. And it, it didn't take long. There was a few close chances, but I think ever since that goal went in, um, she's been firing she nonstop. Four, four um, yeah, right. yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, so one went in, and then the other and three just, turned up. Yeah, um, and that that's the thing that she she's bringing us now. It's it's almost as if she's been here or well, involved with the lionesses for so long when realistically she really hasn't. Um, I think the right wing or left wing, I know her and me like to sort of interchange and swap, but mm -hmm. it's completely her own. Um, I think she's now made herself undroppable. Um, her form from Man City has obviously come straight through into every time she's been in for the Lionesses in camp. Um, and I think her confidence as well. Some of the goals that she scored <laughs> recently um, and one she very almost scored the other day on the volley. Um, I just think having the confidence to be doing that I know they're friendlies, but realistically, you're heading so close into a tournament where mm. it's her first major one. 
she's still quite young um there could be some sort of dip in confidence and nerves at all but for me I think she's taking it all in her stride completely and I think if anything is gonna set our tournament alight it's gonna either be done by her or be made by her um mm -hmm. she's just the center of, of everything really and I'm excited for everyone because you know with this tournament there's going to be people that are watching the lionesses for the first time because they're on a good they've got good tv slots and stuff so i think it's her time to really shine and make herself more of a household name as well so yeah really really yeah. looking forward to seeing her throughout the whole tournament really no definitely it's really exciting because it's her first one and she's through the world cup qualifiers through the french she's been absolutely phenomenal yeah albert what are your thoughts on lauren hemp wow where do i start um you know what? The, the only funny thing is with Lauren Hemp is even for someone of her stature in terms of height, she's very good in the air. And, and you wouldn't think that. I even look in the men's game with Diego Jota. He's not very tall. Robbie Fowler was never very, but they were brilliant in the air. But yeah, G makes a good point. I think she could be the difference between England winning the tournament. Um, she's that good. Um, I think the only slight criticism I would give, and I've mentioned this to you guys before when we spoke after the Arnold Clark Cup games, is just it's a small criticism. Just get your head up a little bit. Um, I, it, it makes such a deal. I think very, I think Chloe Kelly's very good at that. She got very good delivery in the box. But Lauren Hemp is exceptional. Um, she makes England tick, mm -hmm. and it's very important England transition the ball a lot quicker through the midfield to get the ball to her. So, she, yeah, she's highly impressive, man. Um, and yeah, she's going to be a massive, massive uh, plus for England. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Um, James has now joined us back. Um, now and I'm I'm gonna gonna kind of move on to the next country, which is the Netherlands. The one to watch is one of my favourites at Arsenal, but that is Vivian Miedemar. James, how incredible is she? Well, she's that she's that good. She could play in the men's mm -hmm. game. Uh, that's been to, that's been said to me by many of her teammates, such as the likes of Shuri Despitz and Jules Lord, also Jackie mm -hmm. Hoonan. She's she's that good. She could play in the men's game. Also, many opponents that have come up against her. Her movement is second class. Her attitude is, is tremendous. Mm -hmm. And you've got to remember as well, it's not just Arsenal that she played for. It's also Hayden Vane. It's also Bayern Munich. Munich as and, well, yeah. Um, and, you know, careers can go by in the blink of an eye. And you see with, um, with making the choices uh, as to where you go at club level, it's so important. We're in the height of the transfer window where in the nose, for example... Uh, are loving the attention, but they've really got to think about the human side. You know, I've, I've spoken to players where a, a move to another country, a move to another club, has literally make, made them or broken mm -hmm. them. Even in some cases where they've fallen out in love with, fallen out of love with a game, and you wouldn't expect that of a professional player. But it just goes to show that these are not just professional footballers, but they're also human. And I think in the case of Vivian uh, Midemar, uh, Midema, it's not just the attitude it's not just the prowess and the goal scoring she's she's done really well at uh Heel and Fane by Munich and Arsenal and uh, obviously committed to Arsenal as well so it'll be very interesting to see what the future will bring at an international level she will go down in history and she's still got an awful lot left to give no definitely she's got a long she's got a long long good career ahead of her and do you know what I I don't know how much you've seen of the Arsenal women this this season James but um she's sort of moved into that number nine position and it's completely raised her game. So mm. I'm, I'm, I am waiting for the Netherlands manager to move her there um, because she's just, she, her game's just gone to another level because she has openly said she doesn't like playing up, up front. Mm. So it is, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays her all tournament. I, I do believe, I do think. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely, I fully agree. But I, I think the collective is going to be really important. It's about the spine. It's not obviously the star mm. players involved, yeah. but it's uh, it's the collective which gained success in 2017. And mm -hmm. for the team that wins this summer, the collective will come up again because it's not just about the star players, even at the women's game now, but also also with the men's game in the past. As um, as the um, former AC Milan striker Gracio Romanari told me once, who played with the likes of Khulit uh, Raikard van Basten and was managed by Oligo Saki, mm. he said a wonderful quote where he said that all great champions, they have to learn to play together. 
And I thought it was a fantastic quote, which applies to not only the highest level, but all the way down the, f- the football chain in that respect. Oh, definitely. 100%. I couldn't agree more with that one. Um, I'm going to move on to our next next star. Um, Liverpool have just moved up to the, the WSL from the Championship. And their star player is Rachel Furness for Northern Ireland. I have drawn out North, Northern Ireland, but because she's now she's a WSL player, she is yes. banned from being called, spoken about by me. So I'm going to hand this one over to Albert. Albert, what can you tell us about Rachel? Um, you know, I, I, not not loads and loads, but um, yeah, she's in probably in the twilight of her career now. I think she's 34. Um, Northern Ireland's leading goals all-time goal scorer, and actually won she won BBC Sports Personality of the Year in Northern Ireland in 2021, and was given the award by Jurgen Klopp. So I'm sure she's very very happy with that. So That's listen, funny. she's a she's. A, yeah, she's had a very good season, obviously, and she's a, she's going to be the talis the talisman for um, Northern Ireland. So it'd be interesting to see how they get on. Um, but yeah, I don't know loads and loads about her, but yeah, she's a key she's a key figure. But I think you know what it is. It's important, Lottie, that as much as we want England to do well, we we talk about the the stars that are going to be playing in the tournament because for like as G mentioned earlier during the um sort of the stream that you know this might be some some people's first time watching women's football or the national side or being aware of the talents that are out there within Europe as well. So it's, it's very, very important to highlight that. Um, and also just coming back to James, coming to James quickly, is it, I think, is it true with, of, sorry, with Viv Miedemar, she was the youngest player to debut at Eredivisie, is that 15 years old, was it? Yeah, well, exceptionally young, but exceptionally yeah. gifted. Yeah, you know, there's, there's photos mad. surfaced online when she's, uh, she's obviously a huge final fan and uh, obviously meeting Robin van Persie in his younger days at finals. You know, the people often hope that obviously the, the progression that final will make at women's level, that the storybook ending will see Miedema play for final. I'm sure that will happen. I don't know if it will happen in the short term, but mid to long term, I definitely think so. Because she's also very passionate about the club and also wants the club to do well. And if you can play for your club, then you can't turn that opportunity down. But as I mentioned earlier on with Sharida Spitzer, you know, she was involved from the age of 16. And she was the winning captain of uh, last um, the last tournament where the Netherlands actually won. So it's nice to see the progression of these players as well, because as you touch on, this might be the, the uh, first introduction for many people about the yes. women's game. And it's it, it's it, it's the highest level of the women's game. It's European it's European football. It's international football. And I think it's a tournament that's got to be enjoyed for all the um, records that will be smashed smashed and smashed again and which is fantastic i think what is important that people also enjoy it you know because tournaments only yes. come around once every every two years the Good world point. cup coming yeah. up in qatar as well and they're moments in time that's one thing i've learned through the years being a, a football fan and a football writer that major tournaments are moments in time where in a couple of years time you can reflect on on what happened i mean obviously i was here in the netherlands when they won in 2017, been fortunate to interview many players that were involved in that, and it's it's been a real privilege, and it was fantastic to experience. And I, uh, I'm secretly hoping that England uh, get to experience the same this summer in uh, in London and also the whole of England. Yeah, yeah. James, I've got a bit of a personal yeah. question for you. Um, so obviously you're from England, but you live in the Netherlands. Yeah. If either team go to the final and win, is it a win-win for you? Uh, uh, yes, yes, and it's people. People have asked me the question many a time. They've said, uh, "Oh, James, you know, if it's England, the Netherlands World Cup final, what are you going to do?" And obviously, I would veer on the side of England because I was born and raised there. It's my mother tongue. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my second language is the language of the Netherlands, having been here sixteen years. So you just want both teams to do well. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's what you want. You want both t- uh, countries to do well. But I actually think this tournament will throw up a few surprises. And mm-hmm. I think that, um, I think there'll be a, a winner, which maybe I've only seen a couple of people talking about the country that I'm going to suggest to win the tournament. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's France. I, I believe that there's many similarities between France 98 and this French squad mm-hmm. in the fact of they're not being talked about. If, if you think of France 98 when they won the World Cup for the first time, with all that talent at their disposal, nobody were talking about them. Nobody. And I think this French side, with the likes of Wendy Leonard, with the likes of Cascarino, there's talent there. Yeah. 
and I think yeah, yeah. that I see many similarities, and that's why I think that France will win it. Just to um, give a little anecdote about Wendy Bernard, I was fortunate enough to interview Helen Ward, who uh, played a striker for Wales, and uh, she was telling me about the the presence of Wendy Bernard in, when you're in when you're in the tunnel and you're about to come out, and she's Big so crowd. tall. Big she's crowd. so yeah. tall, yeah. and she she looked up and she received a nudge in the back from her from her colleague that said. Uh, don't worry about it. Maybe she's slow. And then she got out on the pitch and she realised that she's anything but slow. So mm. it just goes to show. But I think this this French side will surprise. I think they'll um, they'll take the trophy home. I think it could well be uh, well be a final against uh, England, perhaps. Who knows? The, the Ooh, draw can always... People, yeah. people love to um, talk about what the draw will be, but they always forget it's... Uh, it's a surprise is international level. Yes. One player I wanted to pick out as well before I go was uh, Silvio Rebelo of Portugal. Oh. Uh, to, okay. to, play, to play so many games for Benfica that is a gargantuan club, huge football club. And um, I was fortunate enough to interview Chloe, Chloe Lacasse, who is a striker for Benfica. And she said that Silvio Rebelo, although she's not the youngest anymore, she's still got immense quality. And if you look at um, previous international tournaments, the elder statesman and the, or the elder player in such a case, they've always come good. You know, I think of uh, Diego Godin, for example. Oh, good player. Uh, yeah, a, a, seriously. A, yeah. a Rolls Royce of a defender where mm. people were thinking, oh, he's maybe a little bit too old. I think that Portugal will have um, a good tournament. Obviously, they were there due to different circumstances, but I think that uh, they could well surprise. Good shout. Oh, great, God. great stuff, James. James, one more question before we let you go. I, yeah. I, I, yeah um, obviously, England in their last couple of tournaments, I'd, I'd say the last thread, I, I look in, when I say last one, I mean last two World Cups, sorry, with Mark Sampson, 2015, um, finished third. Um, yeah, the 2019, we finished fourth. Mm. Um, I, I, I personally, I've said this before, I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not sure how far forward Phil Neville took that England group of players, if I'm, if I'm mm. being perfectly honest. Um, so what do you think, what what has Serena Wigman done with this group of players or, it's, or the time she's been in charge that you probably feel that maybe Phil Neville didn't grasp his time as England, England manager when he's with the ladies? I think it's a great question and I'll draw on my experience of having spoken to players that have played under her. Yeah. You know, the likes of Jill Rood and Jackie Kroon and Lynette Bierenstein. She's the one that creates the ties. She's the one that gives players confidence. And you see about the, the management game in general where it's not just anymore the one manager, the his or her way or the highway. Yeah. You've got teams behind teams now. You've got specialist defensive units. You've got specialist um, mid, midfield units. And, and for example, taking uh, shooting practice, for example, on goalkeepers coaches. One point I do want to make before I go tonight, which is really important, I think the role of Ayan Furling as assistant to the I would go so far as to say that his role will be the difference between whether England win it or whether they don't. Because wow. yes, uh, Wiegmann, people know about Wiegmann, but Furling was the one who gave confidence at club level to the likes of Gerard, to the likes of Jackie Hoonan. His attention to detail is, is spot on. It's when when I found out that Ayan Furling was going to be the assistant to Wiegmann, I thought they've kind of got a winning ticket here. You know, if mm. you've got like a, a, a presidential candidate and a running mate, <laughs> yeah. he, he, yeah. they, they they did really really well. And um, he's he's someone who, who gives a lot of confidence to players. And and people love to talk about assistants being oh you know what do they do. I've spoken to many assistants, and um, including Joao Oroso, who was assistant to Fernando Santos at Sporting Lisbon uh, during the time when Cristiano was breaking through. And he was telling me that the role of an assistant, you are there to provoke your manager into a different way of thinking. You've got to be able to help. You've got to be able to help him or her. If you don't do that, you're literally leaving them on their own. So that's why I think that Although Wiegmann quite rightly gets the plaudits for, this, for what she's done with England, I think that Ian Furling uh, really does deserve a lot of praise for his role as well. James, fantastic, mate. Absolutely fantastic insight for you, man. Um, that's, why we want, that's why we want to get you on. So, um, yeah, Lottie, um, anything else you want to say before James goes? 
No, I just want to say thank you so much for yeah, being so patient good. in the background <laughs> um, while we've wrapped up with our other guests. And thank you again for giving you giving your yeah, time to us tonight. Your well. insight is absolutely incredible, as always, James. Thank you very much for the kind words and uh, fantastic insights from you all as well. I was listening in the back and uh, everybody made some great points. I hope everybody watching the show tonight and I hope you all enjoy the tournament, have fun and uh, may the best team win. Exactly. Exactly. Thank <laughs> Definitely. All Thank you so much, James. All the best. James, bye -bye. Soon, Thank you. Take care, mate. Speak soon. See you later. Bye -bye. Wow. Brilliant. What Brilliant. a guest panel Brilliant. we've had on yeah. rotation tonight. But mm. don't worry, we are not done yet. Not just we are yet. not no. done yet. I'm sorry, guys. You're stuck with us a little bit longer. Quite a bit longer, yeah. We've still got six more players to talk about <laughs> and some more predictions to come, I believe, haven't we, G? So yes. I'm going to start off with our, our first three players. Uh, we've got Perrin Harder from Denmark, uh, Ada Heigerberg from Norway, and also Caroline Hansen from Norway. Mm -hmm. I've got to be honest, two of these, I have no idea who they are. So oh, I'm going to cop, be, be the cop out and going to go for Perrin Harder because she's she's a, Chelsea's top goal scorer this season. Um, and she when she does play for Chelsea, she is absolutely sensational. Um, I have seen her, like previous ones where she's put a few past Manu Zinsberger, but that is my limit of my knowledge, guys. So I, she's definitely one to watch throughout this tournament. Yes. She's very mm. impressive for Chelsea. Yeah, they sort of say as well she's um, one of the best players around at the minute. Um, I think we're very lucky to have that sort of stature of a player in our, mm. our league as well, albeit at that club. But, you know, to be able to draw these types of players in um, is amazing for us and it's only going to make everyone else in our league get better, really, isn't it? So... Yeah, one to that's with with Denmark. She's one of the names that I think is gonna carry them when they maybe need to um and get them a little bit further. But yeah, I echo what you say. Um we've seen what we we have, but I think this is another chance of us to really keep learning about these these women as well throughout yes, this next month. Very important. Definitely very important. Definitely. It's a bit like James said. If you're gonna watch a player and enjoy watching them follow their career. And yeah. I think yeah. we will find quite a few gems. Um, throughout the tournament and as we know G, the women move around a lot yeah. even if they're only at a club for a year so I definitely reckon, echo James's words Abs, did you want to add on to anything yeah, about just, 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 yeah, no, yeah, thanks lots, just a few things about yeah, 29 years of age, so that's the people say normally that's your peak of your career um, they say that she creates many goals for herself and is always in the right place at the right time, um, you wave for prepared a year twice Ballon d'Or runner-up in 2018, six domestic league titles, and also has appeared in two Champions League finals with two different clubs. So amazing, amazing pedigree. Nice, thousand percent. Uh, um, I'm going to go with Ada Heigerberg. Yes. Uh, Alps, fill me in. What have I missed? Yeah, 20, 26 years old, man. Um, she took a, it's well documented. She took a bit, she took some time away from the national side, um, because she wasn't particularly happy with the way, um, uh, I'm not sure if it was in particular just football or the way sport was not great in terms of the attitude towards women. So she took a lot of time out of the national game. Um, obsessed for scoring goals, Lucy Bron said about her. She's obsessed. Um, six Champions League titles. Lottie and G, seven French leagues, five French cups, one Norwegian cup, and Ballon d'Or winner in 2018. It speaks wow. for itself. So it's great to see her back in the women's game. Um, and hopefully, guys will be able to see the talent that this woman's got. No, definitely, definitely. And the final one on our screen is Caroline Hansen. Yes. Yeah. 27. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about her. But just really quickly on um, Ada. Just mm -hmm. when she won the Ballon d'Or, was that the one where the the man that presented her the award sort of said something quite sexist towards her as well? I believe so, off the top of my head, off the top of yeah, my head. because I can remember it going round of, um, I think it was something, the way she was dressed or something, he'd made, an old, he was an older type of man, and he'd made a comic, so I always remember her looking like extremely uncomfortable when it could have been, and should have been, one the of the best, best night, points of her yeah. career, so... You can understand maybe that was part of the reason why she 
she took a break as well, which is understandable. Actually, isn't I think it? I remember that. Come to think of it, mm. yeah, yeah. No, I can. I, I completely think is if you were in that position, would you not take a break after that remark? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Not yeah. you think it's it. the best moment, and someone mm. has just taken that away from you, and basically thought that your your achievement was nothing compared to the man that has just won it. <laughs> yeah. So you can mm. understand, and it's just a shame that you know, even at the point, the highest point, as they say, can still be put down. So credit to her, really, for not standing for it and, and losing some valuable years as well. Yeah, she did. She did. She did. No, definitely. Um, but in terms of Caroline Hansen, I have to admit, I don't really know too much about her, to be honest. I don't, I'm not sure where, she, what country she plays in. Um, but obviously, I think there she's wearing the captain's armband, isn't she? Isn't she? So another pivotal one for for Norway for sure and we'll be up against them so it'll be interesting to see them both no definitely good, 100%. Good, play, good player good player Lottie 27 years old lots um mm -hmm. plays for Barcelona key figure in uh, Norway yeah key figure in Norway reaching um Euro 2013 final eight domestic mm -hmm. league titles and one Champions League she's got so again oh, massive wow. massive pedigree Mm. No, definitely. She's abso absolutely massive, for sure. Um, there it, but let me get my words out. Albert, name me one of your players to watch from your team that you got in the sweepstakes. Um, I think mine's pretty obvious. She's been mentioned, and that is Athena del Castillo. Um, I didn't know too much about her, this, but this is the importance of watching, mm -hmm. actually watching the women's game, um, mm -hmm. not domestically, internationally as well, because at the time she played in the Arnold Clark Cup game against England, she only had eight caps for the national side, just eight. And she came on and I'll be honest, she ripped Lucy Bronze a new one. She was brilliant <laughs> when she came on. No, she was, she was excellent, Lottie, and uh, G, she was brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. I think she, 21 years old. Um, forward stroke wide left um, she plays for Real Madrid I believe if I've got that correctly and she's part of the Spain under 19s winning played for Spain under 19s and is part of the European Championship winning side in 2018 so this wow. girl's got some serious this girl's a serious baller man so I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. her play when we go on, uh, go next Tuesday so yes no, that's definitely. My she's definitely one on my list I'm like I'm gutted for Alexia but mm, yeah yeah big time I did go and watch Arsenal Barcelona just to watch her because she's go. incredible. I've got to yeah. admit, um, even G G was there with me at that game as well. So, G, who big. who did you get in the sweepstakes? I haven't actually asked you. I feel completely entirely rude. And can you give me one person player of interest? Yeah, absolutely. So the ones I uh, drew out were Denmark mm -hmm. um, and Belgium. Um, as I mentioned before, we sort of learning curve of Belgium um, mm -hmm. and just throwing it out there we've been doing our the sticker book collection between us yes. um, and actually as silly as it may sound um, it's, not, it's been a it's real not, eye opener to learn not. names and then yeah. when it came to the Belgium team I was getting quite a lot of the same people so then it sort of stuck in my brain of when when we were playing them in that friendly and they popped up I was like I kind of feel like I know who you are like now it's now I'm watching yeah. you and I'm thinking Oh, actually, you're quite a good player. Um, so as silly yeah. as it may seem, it's it's actually all these things are helping us all learn as we oh, go yeah. along. But 100%, 100%. Yeah, I, I picked out for Denmark um, a player midfielder because that's my favourite. I always go for midfielders. That's my favourite area of the pitch. Um, and I've gone for, I think she's called Sophie Pedersen. Okay. Mm, okay. So she's 30 years old. Um, she's currently at Juventus. Um, uh, and as I say, she's a sort of attacking creative type of midfielder mm -hmm. um she has got 77 appearances for denmark and scored seven okay. goals mm. which is uh you know just to play 77 times is uh a no good in itself thing. isn't it um but yeah she's she's represented them all the way through as well from under 16s 17s 19s 23s wow. yeah. and then the the main team and the main team is where she's got the 77 appearances so yeah she's um we might know some of the Denmark players but I think um maybe we don't know too much about her so really looking forward to seeing how she she plays in that midfield as well 
No, definitely. That sounds really interesting. I'm really glad you mentioned um, Juve because my, um, my I, I mentioned that earlier. I've got Italy and I also got Northern Ireland. And my Italian play, player, which again, I got like loads of with the Women's Euro sticker album, was Christiana G- Girelli. And I've probably said that wrong, okay. so I do apologise for everyone no, who's you listening. Haven't, you haven't, not to you. Um, she's, she's playing in Serie A at the moment. Um, for Juve, she's got 58 appearances, 53 goals so, since 2018. Wow. So she's, I mean, absolutely incredible. She's played for um, Italy, played for a country since 2013, 78 appearances, 46 goals. But I think the most interesting thing with her is that she's a serial winner domestically. Mm-hmm. Um, she's won three mm-hmm. Serie A titles with three different teams, seven Italian, uh, seven, seven times winner of the Coppa Italia, mm. nine times women of the Super Coppa Italia. Wow. And she's, mm-hmm. she's just an absolute serial winner. But two of these cups were the Italian Women's Super Cup and the Women's Super Cup, but they've since been renamed. Okay. So she, um, with her country in 2015, the World Cup, they became fourth in the world. Um. 2017, they ended up seventh, seventh in the Euros, and 2019 in the World Cup, they were tenth mm. in the world. But mm. she's definitely one to watch. She's um, she's probably at the peak of her career as a striker at 32 years old, mm. um, and she's actually really tall. Um, she's actually five foot nine, so she's she's a very very tall striker mm. for sure. Good mm. shouts, fantastic Good shouts. No, definitely. Um, I'm now going to throw up our final three on the screen from Let's France, go. Germany, and Sweden. Ooh, three I'm sure, top players, I'm sure top, top players. Definitely three massive top players. And Wendy Reynard has already been mentioned. <laughs> yeah. She's tall, she's intimidating, and she's quick. Yeah. I, I don't need to say much more on that. She, <laughs> the pace, the technique. And she likes her headers. I have to admit, they're just yeah. very, very powerful. And it's it's scary. She's been at Lyon since 2006. Mm. And she hasn't. She just hasn't left. There's over 253, 50 appearances, 83 goals. And it, the list just goes on and on and on. And that was, that's just in the league, not in the cup or the continental cups. That's... That's just domestically. I mean, Albert, have you seen her play before at all? Yeah, yeah. when did run up? Yeah, I've seen her for this last, um, the last couple of tournaments actually. And then um, she obviously plays for Leon as well. She's captain for Carban Country, um, 14 yeah. French League titles. She's just, um, she's just won the Champions League this season as eight. well. Yeah. And that's number eight, I believe. Um, and 100 plus appearances in Champions League as well. Wow. Serious, seriously, seriously experience. So, um, yeah, you, people get 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 to watch that Wendy Reynard, man. That's just, that's a serious defender, man. Serious. Mm. And very very dangerous on a corner. <laughs> yes, set pieces. Oh, extremely, no, hundred percent. Um, our our next player. I'll be honest with you. The the most information I have on Sweden is Stina Blatstenius. <laughs> um, so, and she's one of ours. She's been one of us since January, and I'm quite looking forward to seeing her in in the tournament. But We've we've all agreed before when we put this show together. This, this show is also going to be about learning as well. Yes, so Albert, well what have you got on me on to Ro- on on Fr- Fridolina Rolfo? Yeah, she's probably my outside pick for a top goal scorer. But yeah, I, the first time I saw her play was I, obviously I came to the women's game in December last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arsenal Barcelona. This 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 girl can play, man. Um, yeah, ex Bayern Munich and Wolfsburg, twenty eight years old. So um, in the peak of her powers, um, a league title with three different clubs. Two Olympic silver medals and a World Cup bronze medal. So look out for this lady, man. Um, yeah. yeah, that's gonna be yeah. She's gonna she's gonna hit the back of the net, man. She's a very very good player. Like I said, I saw her play for the first time for Barcelona, and that's who she plays for. So yeah, she's this top 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 strikers of people. Keep an eye out for Fridolina Rolfo. Trust me. Oh, definitely. Gee, do you know much about Fridolina Rolfo at all? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think we were all on the same page last year when we got down to the latter stages of the Champions League um, and Barcelona were setting those ridiculously amazing <laughs> records of attendance. Yeah. Um, 
but that's when I first noticed there as we're obviously playing in the midfield for mm. for Barcelona. Um, yeah. uh, you know, such a big club like that speaks for itself anyway, really, doesn't it? But I think just just separately, the kind of person that she is. Um, I recently saw a video of, you know, they've all been to their training camps, haven't they, in their country before coming over. Um, and it's always with the women that they do put some extra effort to meet the youngsters and everything. Yes. But this, there was this one girl and her dad that were right outside the training ground as she was walking through. Um, and she stopped for about five minutes to, to sort of chat to them. Um, gave sort of signed her shirt for her while she was there and as the girl was already amazed by that and she kept looking at her dad to be like wow look what I've got um, and then all of a sudden she turns and just gives her both her boots at the same time um, so it's like things like that are just so like precious and you, you know that could be that next player that comes through in 10 years time and has that wonderful memory and it keeps it going doesn't it but I think it just goes to show the type of person she is as well. You know, she's obviously won yeah. quite a lot. She's playing for one of the best clubs in the world, Sweden, yeah. obviously now getting up there yeah. there and thereabouts, really, for, for this tournament. Um, and to still be so genuine and humble like that, to to give away something that, you know, to her, it's just her pair of boots, but she knows what that might feel like to that young yeah. girl. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's what I sort of know about her. But again, I think we're all slightly excited to have a look at Sweden this time round. Yeah, with, I think that, yeah, Stevens. I reckon they might, yeah. You know what? I, I think there's a fair shout from, you know. I do. No, no definitely. Yeah. I mean, when when you host story, stories like that, it, it's it's inspiring. It's it's trailblazing yeah. at its best. Um, I know that domestically, any any of the football girls, they will stay behind. They will sit there and chat to fans they know on the personal level. I know that the academies do that as well. Mm. So it's it's all tra- trailblazing uh, f- for the future. And hopefully we, we can get some good inspired girls that will perhaps with an absolute talent go, go yeah. come up to the, yeah. to the future. Yeah, um, our sure. last, 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 last person is Lena, Lena Oberdorf. She plays for Germany. She's had 27 appearances, three goals as of the 24th of June. Um, she currently plays for um, Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga, uh, for Bundesliga. Um, she's a, she plays across the set, plays across the back, yeah. um, centre back and left back, and she's also a defensive midfielder as well as a central midfielder. So she plays around the middle of the park. Um, at twenty years old, sure. she's yeah, yeah. playing for the national team already, which is absolutely brilliant. But she. And she joined the national squad at 17 years old. Wow. Yeah, last World Cup. Yeah, mad, mad. No, definitely. I think I think good. even I think Jonas Jonas Eideville actually I think when we they came when the Arsenal women came up against Wolfsburg he said she is kind of your complete midfield player. She mm-hmm. is. Um, she was she was named player of the tournament in uh, Euros 2017. Yeah, so she's young. She's still I mean she's young now. So yeah, in that tournament under 17 she was named player of the tournament. So um. Again, this is look another person to look out for. There's some good, it can be some good, good players to watch this tournament, man. And um, yeah, looking forward to it, man. Absolutely. No, definitely. Um, G, I know you've watched Wolfsburgs quite a bit towards the end of the Champions League. Did you catch Lena any, anywhere on the pitch? Um, I'll be honest, I I didn't. Um, I obviously yeah. watched the Wolfsburg game, and I think just the way you know they were so together, they were so good. Um. Yeah, it just it goes to show that they've got talent throughout it. Um, mm-hmm. And as James was saying earlier, Germany are now in this patch where they're sort of transitioning again, aren't they, from basically running the show consistently for years to going through a little bit of a rough patch and coming out the other side. And it's players like her that young as well. To, to even, If you think realistically to be internationally playing in the first team at 17, you've got mm. to be sort of a special talent, haven't you? Um, and it was either that or you fall away a little bit, but obviously she's just sort of growing into her own and again, being versatile. Um, she can go back to the defence, as you say, or play that defensive sweeper sort of role in midfield as well. So yeah, for sure. One to look out for and a name that I think we'll probably hear quite a lot. Yeah. Well said. Good shout. Good shout. Definitely. Um, 
last 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 thing guys before we get on to our predictions because that's probably the one everybody's waiting for we've heard from everybody else but it's our turn soon yeah. um the last one who are your last players um i'm gonna go with g first because i've been to albert first quite a bit so mm. g who who is your other player to watch out for yeah your... so belgium as i say um gone from midfielder of course um i believe she's called marie miniart or miniart mm-hmm. um she's 23 years old represented them already at under 17s under 19s and then straight into the first team from 2019 through to now um she's only on 26 appearances when she's got three goals so that's quite a good return for a midfielder really yeah. um and yet i'm not too sure this is where i got a bit stuck because it seemed that she's just had a summer move to Anderlecht from an, a club i think it's club some something the team was called but it seems okay. like they haven't said she she's played for two years so i don't know if there's something gone wrong there somewhere yeah Okay. Or she's maybe missed yeah. out on club football. I don't know because of COVID, you know, their leagues might have finished. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. And maybe it was just the internationals that kept going. Um, so it kind of, yeah, she's just moved to Anderlecht this summer, I believe. Um, so she's in between that point. So, yeah, she's a, she's part, she's obviously um, part of the the group. Um, so something must have been wrong there with <laughs> with the facts. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, if she hasn't played or maybe through injuries or, as I say, through COVID, stopping leagues, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But to still then be back into it, um, back in the main squad is just speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? So one of the, the names that you maybe don't hear so much with Belgium as associated with Belgium. Um, so, yeah, just another a youngster, really, to look out for. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I'm going to jump in next because I'm going to drop in my last Northern Ireland player. Yeah, and I think yeah. one one to watch will be for Northern Ireland is Laura Rafferty. Um, she's currently playing for Southampton in the Championship, who've just been promoted. Um, okay, well done. The league's full name is the FA Women's National League Southern Premier League Division. So they had to, eat, although they were champions, they still had to play off, play off the last spot because Liverpool had moved up. Um, she's had 20 caps for Northern Ireland. Um, she she plays at the back for for Southampton um, in their promotion push. She was very she's very tall and a very commanding central defender. So mm. I think she's definitely one to watch. She reminds me um, where I was speaking to Matt. Um, Matt described her of um, being like similar to our Leah Williamson in the way that the, mm. that she passes the ball out from the back and like she's not afraid to get forward either. So she's definitely one to watch. Albert, who's your last player? Yes, keep this short but sweet. Yeah, my I've, I've gone for experience. So obviously, Lika Martins, 29-year-old winger. Ooh, um, good shout. Yeah, 136 caps, man. So, you know, I know Poland are going for a bit of a transitional period. Yeah. They're at a different point from winning the tournament to going into this one. But yeah, 136 caps and 54 goals. So yeah, she's going to be one to watch out for, absolutely experienced, well-known, and she can deliver. So we'll see how she turned yeah, up definitely. on the tournament. We saw, we saw what, what she had against England. Mm. Yes. Pitch. Good yeah. plow. Good plow. No, definitely. G, do you want to round off with, with our choices? Round up. Yeah. Let's go through it. So, um, Albert, we'll go to you first. Your overall winner of this tournament. Oh, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I don't think I'll go, but I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to wing it anyway. But no, overall, um, I'm going to be different. Obviously, I don't say England, it's too easy. Um, I'm going to Sweden. Nice. I like that. Oh. Golden Glove. Oh, you know what? Goalkeeper, you know what? Let me, I'm going to, I will go England. Let's go up. Let's go Mary up. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, England star. You know what? I'm not going to go for the obvious one, but I love this woman to pieces. I call her the Alexander Pirlo women's football. Kira <laughs> Walsh. Passing ability okay. insane. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. she's a top, top player, man. So, yeah, Kira Walsh. Nice. And then finally, top goal scorer. I'm going to go for Fridolina Rolfo. Oh, nice. Ooh, I like yeah. it. Sweden yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep, keep Sweden. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Lottie, overall winners for you? Oh, uh, do you know what? I originally did put England in earlier, but I'll be honest, I have changed it. I'm going for Denmark. 
Oh, wow. Okay, okay cool. I'm going for Denmark, just for a wild card. Um, yeah, nice to be so, no, definitely. I, mean, I don't want to jinx us either. That's the problem. Yeah. You know what? It, you know what? I don't know what it's like with the men and women. It's, like, it's something about Scandinavian countries. It just, when it comes to major tournaments, they they, they just deliver. I don't know what it is. It's maybe yeah. it's just the way they're coached or the way they look at sport. Yeah, it just it is. It's very good. Very good. No, definitely. Um, and then golden glove for you. Oh, oh I'm going to go for Arsenal's very own Manu Zinsberger. Okay. Um, she's had a letter penalty in since she's joined Arsenal, if I remember wow. rightly, or maybe one. I think she's only, it might be one. Probably wrong. Matt will probably correct me. I'm hoping. He, I can see him in the chat. Um, <laughs> and she's just been unstoppable this season. Absolutely unstoppable. Yeah. And she loves she loves an atmosphere. So I'm going. Mm. I'm, I'm back in Manu all the way. Nice. Um, England style? I'm going to go for someone completely different. Everybody's mm. gone for hemp. I'm going for Russo. She was incredible okay. the other night. So I'm going to I'm going to back Russo for this one. I like that. Although she might not get the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, top goal scorer. Ooh. Oh, it's got to be my mead. It's got to be me though. Okay. She's absolutely on fire at the moment. Um, I spoke to yeah. her at the Villa game, and I said. I'm coming. I'm coming out to Manchester. I want another hat trick, and her face absolutely lit up. So it's got to be Beth Mead for Golden Boot. And, She's and the thing with and the thing with Beth Mead that. as well her yes. first was back in the qualifier uh, against Northern Ireland, and she's gone on to do four more since. So I would like to see Madness. more. And that's another, and that is the main reason why she's done the back of my England shirt. And yes. the irony is, she's got our number sevens. Bukayo Saka is seven for England as well in the last year, race. So both my first England shirts have got seven on the back. So it's brilliant. Nice. Um, now, you know, sorry, look, look, now you can make a good point. The thing, the thing with um, Beth Mead, I think people, they, I think they just, they associate it with scoring goals, but actually um, the key pass as well. I think, I don't know if this is, I don't know what order this is in, but I think her and Frank Kirby were one and two for key passes in the WSL. Yeah. That's not just got Beth Mead. She's, no, in the say what, she's, yeah. had, she's had rec a record breaking season for Arsenal in mm, terms of her, her creating stuff and everything else. She's just absolutely on fire. I'm so excited for her to be going into this tournament. Um, me probably, no, definitely. You'll hear me, you'll probably hear me in Manchester screaming that. Um, even um, uh, on fire to freedom of desire, yeah, that has been in my yeah. head for a couple of days. Um, the mm. WhatsApp group that we've got with G, and she, she will know that. Um, but yeah, no, she's absolutely on fire at the minute, and I want her to continue. She's just absolutely flying, and I, I can't mm. wait for her to be that to sort of kick everything off. And then there's also the fact that her and Neil Williamson have got Jordan Nobbs's old number, old numbers from previous Euros and World Cups, so that's pretty exciting as well. Mm. No. Shout, shout, yeah. Do you want me to run through mine? Uh, yeah, go on, G. Right, G, yeah. I'll call the categories out for you. So, who have you got for your overall winner? I have gone with Sweden. Okay. Um, because of All the right. things that I've been picking up um, and hearing about them, that uh, not not had a chance to actually watch them, but mm -hmm. from what has been heard, they're, they're up there. Um, oh. So, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, if they live up to that. Yeah. And then uh, Golden okay. Glove. Golden a uh, golden glove. Okay, yeah. go for it. I went for. I think I went for Mary Epps. You know, you did. Go on, I've got um, up in front of me, Jay. Yeah, because I think we is shown with the the previous talk. I think was it last year? Jordan Pickford got it, but we didn't necessarily win. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't always have to be the winners that keep the. No, sorry, it was the World Cup. He got it in the one four. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's always defensively uh, very good i'm just i'm looking forward to seeing her as we've all said today be challenged a bit more um because mm -hmm. i think she has had it a little bit easy recently but mm -hmm. um i feel like it's it's her time to shine so i'm looking forward to that and and hopefully helping us along the way as well <laughs> oh, definitely uh golden boot golden boot i went for Viv. yeah shout well done because there's just always a goal in her isn't there um yeah. she's Night. incredible yeah. Oh, 92 wow. goals, 92 goals in 108 games for Holland. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I we all know that she's not she's a very humble person and she doesn't like to boast about it, but 
mm. you know as a professional in that it's, it's going to be in your mind that you get a few goals or a hat trick in one game and you're getting that you're closer to that deadline of 100 so uh yeah i think um she might not say say it but i think in the back of her mind it's it's probably a little nice little target for a tournament as well Stuff. okay so nice most valued player now your most valued player has got an acl injury so she will not be taking part yeah unfortunately so who would you change that to that is my question yeah <laughs> it's hard now isn't it because uh of what she you know what she had um won with ballon d'or and everything and yeah um most valued player um I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um roll uh well, let's go with Rolfo for uh, Yeah. Sweden. Good shout, Lee. Good shout. Nice. You know, if if I'm Believe gonna go that. with the overall winners, then it's gonna have to be something like that, isn't it? <laughs> Good shout. Yeah. And I think most people in the chat will know who your England star is gonna be of the tournament. Do you wanna tell everybody? Number eleven. Yeah. Oh, I've um, got no idea. Who is she? It's actually we call she's called Lauren Hemp. <laughs> I have her. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've heard about her, but uh, yeah, and as I said, as I said before, um, she's just such an exciting player. Uh, as a winger type midfielder myself, I'm always excited to see those types of players. Like she's, I like seeing people that would take players on. Like that, mm. that's exciting football for me. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I just think it's. Um, it's absolutely her time to to step up and show people. So, fingers crossed, she stays fit and go goes well this tournament. Hundred mm, yeah, percent, definitely, definitely. You guys got some interesting choices. I know, I know, mine were kind of kind of a bit weird, but they work for me. So, yeah. um, originally, yeah. I did have obviously England, but I didn't want to jinx it. I sat there and thought about it. And, no, just quickly change that to Denmark, and yeah. then I don't. I won't feel bad in the later later stages of things, but. I am going to wrap up tonight. We've been here for two hours, which is a bit longer than we job. actually officially attended. Mm. Um, but I just no, want to say thank show, you guys yeah. for hosting with me tonight. And also, I can't wait to do the rest of the tournament with both of you. Yeah. So it's it's really, really, really exciting for sure. Lottie, let, Lottie, let me just reinforce again. People, as we be Canon Chatter and Albert JT, we're streaming from both channels, okay, for this preview. So hit the like for each and subscribe to both channels. So get them algorithms up, people, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. Um, and for me, everybody, it is good night. And I, G, Albert, any last words? Enjoy tomorrow. Take yes, it all enjoy in. Enjoy tomorrow, Lottie. Yes. Um, yeah. Definitely. I I've you're got getting some... there in the afternoon and meeting up with some of the guys, aren't you? So yeah, no, definitely. Um, I am I am gonna be making some content videos while I'm up there. I will be doing some content videos when me and Albert head over to Spain, Germany, Brentford, Brentford. on Tuesday. Yeah, for yeah, Brentford, yeah. Brentford Stadium. Yeah. And also, I've got tickets to the final, so some content is coming your way from there. So I'm really, really excited. Hope, hope, it's, hope it's not too late. I've got, I've, I've spoken to some, some contacts about them. They're trying, man. They're trying, man. Oh, God. I hope so, Albert, because I am as well. It's I am hard. as well, I promise yeah. you. Um, Amazing. Oh yeah, big up to the people in the chat, by the way. Thank you for for the two hours that you've met. Um, fantastic guests. Big up to all the guys that came on. Um, no, but yeah, definitely. like I said, man, obliterate the like button and subscribe to both channels, please, people. Yeah, no, definitely. And good night from all of us on Albert J TV and Canon Chatter.